Okay, here we are. We are live. As always, here every week, Sunday, 1130. Uh, until maybe about 1.30 or 2. So, if we get some people in here, we'll go ahead and look at some recent comments, answer some questions. <clears throat> if you are new here, make sure you catch us next week, or you can catch the replay. Um, one person mentioned that they hadn't heard about the TS Illusion. That's probably because nobody calls it that but me. <laughs> um... The TS illusion is where when you have a T and an S combination, there's actually no word in the English language that has a TS pronunciation <clears throat> because we don't say what we say what and you push that S through that T position, but there's no actual T there. It's a special kind of S. So <clears throat> if you want to learn more about that, uh, in this video, that goes through as clickable. Um, otherwise, what else do we have? Um, <clears throat> so on the recent contractions lesson, somebody was asking for uh, more examples and things like that. Uh, I do plan to provide examples, uh, maybe in like one big lesson or something that goes over different kinds of contractions with examples. Um, but yes, the next contraction lesson, hopefully that car isn't too loud for you guys. The next contraction lesson will be coming up pretty soon. Um, I got really exciting plans coming up over the next few weeks for the channel. We can talk more about that if you want. Uh, somebody asked about the S at the end of everything contracted, so everything's, and it's supposed to be a Z sound. It is definitely supposed to be a Z sound, but there is partial end of word devoicing. And we can bring that up as well. Um, actually, I think I have that right here. Yeah. So with partial end of word devoicing, uh, for some speakers, it may be full end of word devoicing, but um, that's where you start in the voiced version. So it's like everything and then natives will commonly drop the voice before they drop the sound and it'll actually turn into an S. And that can be very confusing for many English learners because you'll hear it more like something like everything's or something like that. But notice that we don't say with a K, that would kind of turn the ng into a nk. Everything's, it doesn't work that way. It's everything's. So really fast, it's hard to catch that Z at the beginning, but there is supposed to be a Z, or if you enunciate it clearly, um, <clears throat> it should come out uh, either mostly or completely as a Z. So don't be confused by that. Um, some really great comments this week. Not a whole lot of questions. Um, of course, I didn't post a whole lot this week either. That might be why. <clears throat> um, Okay. One person asked, uh, let me copy this. Hopefully it'll be true. It's not what I wanted. So one person asked, uh, when we are writing a word, if we come across a schwa sound, how do we know what sound to write in that place? This um, is, it's a good question, but I think that it's it shows the um, horrible way that things are usually taught, uh, mixing like sound and spelling and stuff. And <clears throat> either way, you'll probably still end up with this question, but, um, it, that, that doesn't help the problem usually <clears throat> with, uh, how it's taught. So, um, let's see here, starting three. <clears throat> so what happens, uh, here is not even a native would know. Okay, so you guys have to understand. It's not like we natives know like, oh, this is a schwa sound, but in this word, we spell it with the letter A. Like, it doesn't work that way. Abdullah's here. What a lovely live stream. Yeah, you're the only person here. Thanks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> hopefully it'll be a good one today. Welcome, welcome. Let me know if you have questions. Um, 
But what I was saying here, so when we're writing a word, uh, like natives, we don't have the concept of schwa. That's a phonetic or a linguistic concept. And we don't like, we think in English, we think we have five vowels, sometimes six, right? Depending on that, that goes back to the, the, the spelling and, and sound confusion problem, but A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Y is not actually a vowel, but in English, like if you say happy, it's an E sound, so it's not a Y sound, and it represents the E. Um, Fluent American is here. Welcome, welcome. Sorry I didn't get to your stream yesterday. I was like full with classes all day. Um, it was a super, super busy day, and then it was at like, like 4 o'clock. I was like, oh, there was a live stream today that I could have jumped on. So, um, yeah, if you want to jump on, uh, I can, <laughs> you can tell me how to do that. I can see an invite button uh, if you have a moment. Um, King Lion plays here as well. Welcome, welcome. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any particular plan. So if you do jump on, I mean, <clears throat> you might want to wait until we get some more people in here and we have some questions. We can start my teaching days too. Totally understand. Yeah. So, um, but either way, just uh, let me know if you want to hop on now or in a little bit, and we'll uh, we'll do that, or we can do another time. Uh, if you can email me a link, I can stop by for a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, how do I do that? There's an invite button. Copy that. Uh, do, 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 do. Email. I'll just reply to the video collab. Send. Invite and send link, yeah. Or can I just, is there another option there? Invite, yeah. <clears throat> okay, cool. So <laughs> this is the first time I'm doing this. We're going to have somebody else on the stream, guys. So we'll figure out how this works. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get like a notification or something that... Uh, or if you're just going to pop up, we'll see what happens. But um, anyway, with the with the schwa sound, um, it could be represented by any letter, right? So you you have to separate sounds and spelling in English. You just that's just how you have to do. It. Even natives, we learn sound first. We learn how to speak and listen, and then we go to school to learn how to read and write. And those are two separate things. Um, if you were learning Spanish good job you <laughs> you can sort of learn the script and the sounds at the same time um although there are potential issues with that as well um send a snapping oh i didn't i didn't see that one i uh, really looking forward to that yeah cool um but <clears throat> so you want to focus instead of trying to say like oh when writing a word how do we know what letter to write if there's a schwa sound you have to learn how to write separately. Um, you want to focus on the sound first. And there are certain patterns. Um, There's certain, uh, like, I think the way that, that spelling and sounds are taught is just absolutely horrible. Um, but there, there are certain things that you can do, certain patterns you can learn that will help a lot. There are almost always exceptions. That's part of the problem. Um, at some point in the future, I don't have any plans for this right now, but I do plan to make a lesson on, on that. Um, so it just it is what it is it's unfortunate sorry it's it's english um but yeah you have to go through what natives went through there's that's kind of just what it is um but once you get into that right and once you like for example natives right if, if you were to give me just like a random word like that doesn't actually exist or a word that i've never seen before that does exist i would have no idea how to pronounce it as a native speaker, I would have no idea just just looking at it. Um, I can make a good guess based on certain patterns and certain things that I have in my native database that I've built through learning how to read and write. Um, <clears throat> but unless somebody actually pronounces it for me or like I go look up the pronunciation, there's no way that I would know for sure how that word is pronounced. That's just how English is. So um i'm not seeing anything yet i don't know what's going on with with the connection here 
I would expect that you would have have, have joined us by now. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll just wait. Um, but <clears throat> otherwise, uh, let's keep it going until Mr. Fluent American uh, gets in here. Um, let's see. A lesson. That's my comment. Yeah. So one thing I can talk about <clears throat> is uh, sorry, be right there. So, yeah, it's no problem. No rush. No rush. I'm just like I don't know if there's any technical difficulty on your end or what's going on. Um, you know, if if the the baby wakes up and you gotta you know put him back to sleep or whatever, that's that's fine. No problem. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, so as you guys might know, if you've seen some of my recent uh, posts, uh, written posts, I am trying to drastically improve the quality of the content. I'm steeping myself in how to make better videos, everything from the title, the thumbnail, storytelling, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he is here. Okay, so let me see here. Um, so I'm gonna do, I'll do split. Add to stream. There we go. I'm here. Look at that. What's wife. up, man? So I can hear you. Okay. Headphones test, test. Good. Can you oh, hear me? Okay. Yes, I do. Cool. How's it going, man? Good. Good. So okay. not only is this your first time on the stream, but you were the first person ever on oh my, my stream. Gosh. Yeah. First guest. First of yes. many, I hope. Yeah, it's a game hope. changer, man. Yeah, we'll see. All <laughs> right. So what's what's going on? Not too much editing the next video. You know that's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, yeah. I've looked at uh, I've seen a couple of your videos, and I, you, you kind of go like pretty big on the editing. Like you have like yeah, your, your target move across the screen to transition and things like that. Well, because you know it's interesting to say because like I look at a lot of English YouTubers just kind of see what people are doing, and it's like you know everyone's doing kind of the same. Mm -hmm. I don't want. What's the way? I don't want to say like basic, but kind of like it's not bare bones, but it's very much okay. If I say a word, I'll just play the word, and that's like it. And it's like I've been mm -hmm. definitely been trying to incorporate more like kind of like the storytelling elements, try to make it more interactive. And yeah, I don't know, like the kind of videos I would like to watch as like a, a language learner. That's kind of been my approach, um, exactly. Yeah, no. that's what I was just talking about. Like, I'm doing tons of research, and um, you know, like. The because what I've realized is, you know, I get lots of comments on my channel saying like, oh, I'm so glad I found your channel or, mm -hmm. you know, I've watched every mm -hmm. other video about this. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're the first one that, that it makes sense and all this stuff. And so I know the value is there, but I mm -hmm. look at my audience retention and it's just like, right. Got so with the hockey stick, man, the hockey stick of death. It'll yeah. Kill you. So you, know? you got to even if it's just educational, I think especially today, like you have to figure out how to keep people watching but also don't make it like gimmicky, right? Like, yeah, I think it can definitely be overproduced. Like that. That's it's yeah. trying to navigate that line. Um, so, I mean, what I've from what I've seen with YouTube, it's a lot of you give people what they want mm -hmm. on YouTube and then the classes and the workshops and things you do. Mm -hmm. That's where you give people what they need more, because yeah. if you just do what people need, it's I mean, you're unfortunately, I wish it weren't the case, but retention is going to drop and click through rates drop and it's just harder so it's kind of feeding into the monster to a degree yeah yeah yep. um, yeah so any of you english learners out there watching if you want to start a youtube channel you know this is your your, your oh god to get started <laughs> yeah go use your Go english on your youtube, YouTube channel yeah. yeah 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 so anyway i heard you, yeah. I heard you talking about the schwa i'm always talking yeah. about actually got, i'm literally having my shirt but um oh wow yeah yeah i, I think a lot of people kind of you just needing to understand like any vowel can make yeah. that sound. It's just like always kind of being aware of that because it's mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it can change your whole perspective and things. You know? Oh yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Uh, well, you have any any uh, tips for people here about the schwa or or just in general? Oh God, um, you know, just trying not to. I think a big thing is people often overthink it, and I don't know mm -hmm. about you but this is something i see with a lot of students is i think a lot of students are paying attention to um spelling rules and yeah. text yeah. and 
in a lot of ways when you're looking when you're looking at letters this is true for any sound it can be such a distraction because you can kind of you see a letter and you you, you see it written and you get in your mind this way that okay i need to pronounce it this way mm -hmm. as opposed to focusing more on the actual sound and be like oh mm -hmm. Um, this is how it actually sounds in this situation. Um, mm -hmm. So I think kind of learning to just kind of separate the sound. Um, you want to also watch out specifically for the schwa. Make sure it's not entering into ah territory. I don't know about mm -hmm. your students, but I'm guessing a lot of your yeah. students are doing more of like an ah, you know, like but like but becoming like bad or like done becoming like don a little bit. Um, and I think the last thing is just making sure enough air is pumping through your throat because it's so mm -hmm. easy to block off the air with like the back of your tongue yeah. or just to have your throat in a more closed position because so many other languages i'm de dealing a lot i've been kind of looking at a lot of actually think i am not a singer but i think there's mm -hmm. lots of exercises related to singers that can be very mm -hmm. helpful in american english okay. if there is like a standard in in this in the sense of a lot of people have their throat very closed off so you're never getting this same amount of airflow that you're going to hear from native speakers mm -hmm. i feel mm -hmm. so trying to find ways to open that up more a lot of people are projecting from almost more like lungs and like that mm -hmm. makes sense you know your lungs are for breathing but if you can get your diaphragm a little bit more involved if you're not sure where your diaphragm is it's lower in your stomach if you can mm -hmm. feel that tensing even just a little bit when you're talking it can help add a little bit more depth to what you're saying okay. good very good points yeah um definitely some crossover from music yeah Mm -hmm. um it's actually interesting that you bring this up because i was just working with somebody yesterday on the schwa um and he's a, a russian speaker he generally sounds mm -hmm. really really good mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to sort of bump up that little little last bit and he mentioned that um apparently i don't know if this is true for all russians but this is what he told me he said when russians uh learn how to sing apparently the way that they like they hold this part of the vocal tract is like super tight i believe that and well. there's actually like mm -hmm. people like russian youtubers you know who make videos teaching russians how to open up mm -hmm. so that they can sing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so yeah it's you know the struggle is real mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i think we take it for granted as english speakers we're just like hey just like just open up just relax you know and it's just like yeah it's not and it's easy. and it kind of ties in you know even across words like when you're saying a whole sentence i would say the mm -hmm. and this is less about the schwa though it's all connected is that when you hear people say a sentence you're going to hear people stop the breath mm -hmm. so can still stop it especially consonants consonants are the worst consonants cause you to really get you that choppy sound or like if mm -hmm. i say that sentence choppy if like consonants really cause you to get that choppy you know so what yeah. what's happening there i'm not i'm stopping the breath i'm never letting mm -hmm. the breath continue from one sound to the next that's how you get that flow you know you listen to yeah. native speakers in north america and you're like man everything's mushed everything is kind of just flowing mm -hmm. from one thing to the next how's that happening well it's letting the breath have a chance to yeah. continue going exactly um, but exactly yeah the breath helps carries it yeah it helps carry the sounds out that's what mm -hmm. i like to say yeah. yeah yeah and americans have the opposite problem you know americans mm -hmm. going I'm, I'm sure i i know i have this with italian and i'm sure you've mm -hmm. experienced this with, with spanish um oh, yeah. like um trying to go the opposite direction trying to get a choppier sound trying to cut the breath mm -hmm. is is also a challenge you know so it's it, it works both yeah. ways you know, yeah it works yeah. both ways and, it, and it's so subtle too because it's not like if i'm speaking spanish i don't want to say like like quiero ir a la playa yeah. you know or something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that's too much mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah yeah it's that balancing aspect yeah even like for instance like italian is known as like a, like a syllable time language but that doesn't mean that every single syllable is going to be held for the same amount of time there is linking yeah. that happens you know, there are reductions that happen um, of course yeah 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 so okay cool cool what would you um, say so you said that yesterday was your busy teaching day what were what are some yeah. sounds that you well that students were having yesterday besides the schwa uh well it's actually funny because like half the day was with one student he wanted to take an extended session oh my god um, i have a student yeah. that wants to do like two weeks like five hours a day because he's like an actor and he's trying to prepare for a role and i'm like you know <laughs> Ooh. That's yeah. I mean, that's that, that's <laughs> that admirable. Everybody. Yeah, but it's also kind of hard on us because we're like, you know, but we're getting paid, you know, so mm -hmm. I guess we can't complain. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. I mean, I, well, right now the uh, I'm starting to get a couple students for my my language mentoring offering that I just opened up. Um, Congratulations. That's great. Yes. Thank you. Um. That's more just about like you know planning out. It's not actually me teaching. It's just you know, hey, let's set up a structure for you so that you can go get that. Do yeah. Thing. Do that. 
but um, mostly I'm focused on, you know, teaching the mouth posture and, and helping to like f finish building out that course. Um, so I do a lot of work with what I call phase zero, which is just vocal track, vocal track mm -hmm. manipulation. And then um, a lot of work with the schwa, things like that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, I do have one student that is kind of farther along. Um, her T has drastically improved. That's great. Uh, which is That's amazing because so. yeah right instead of like the 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 mm -hmm. like like how do you get it you know just right and yeah so we're making progress with with uh, on lots of fronts with different people that's mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. i think that's the hard part is that you know the longer i teach pronunciation i mean i've been teaching it teaching english since like 2010 but teaching focusing specifically on pronunciation for like the last maybe like four ish years um mm -hmm. the more it's like Man, I, I think the hardest part about pronunciation is that there's so many ways, like mm -hmm. like talking about like T's and like a flap T, you know, there's mm -hmm. there's so many ways to do a flap T. You can have contact, you can have heavier contact, you can have no contact, you could do contact mm -hmm. in the middle of the tongue. You're like there's so many and the same speaker is going to use different ones in different situations. So it's yeah. like, you know, again, this goes back to, hey, pay attention to the sound more than to the um like the letters and, and specific things is yeah. probably my biggest advice exactly exactly perfect um so what was i gonna say um we do have a question here um i don't know how much time you have left how much you want to hang out but um yeah we can bring this up uh it's a it's a two-part message apparently so um king lion play thanks for the question um, good on king lion for doing this this is great yeah uh i record voices and send them to my american friend he said i sounded like a five-year-old but not like an, a non-american um, that's interesting that's probably in the right direction uh he also said that it sounded like some sounds were hard for me to pronounce like it's hard for me to control my mouth do you know how i can fix that so what do you say you know can you play it was the first part again he said it sounded like yeah. a five it's so hard because I don't know if like the five year old thing makes me wonder is, is this a pitch thing? Because um, mm -hmm. you think of kids, I mean, kids just naturally have a higher pitches. Um, I'm also king, I'm guessing male or female speaker. Looks like female from the picture. Sorry if that's wrong. <laughs> but, um, it would also help to know your native language as well. Mm -hmm. if you can yeah. That. Mm -hmm. People saying they sound younger. That's very interesting. To me, that could be. I know your stances on placement and things like that, mm -hmm. um, but it does sound to me like it could be something where the a higher placement is going to do something that raises your pitch. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, even like native speakers and things, you can speak at a higher placement. There, there's two components, in my opinion. It's, it's placement. It's also breath. So it could be that you're not actually getting enough breath through your throat because... Mm -hmm. Again, this goes back to what I was mentioning earlier about, hey, like if you can get your diaphragm a little bit more involved, that might add a little bit more weight to your voice. Um, like even just the way I just said that, like uh, uh, you hear all that vibration. You know, if you find that that's a difficult sound to produce, if you're doing more ah, uh, ah, uh, things like that, well, that we're not getting that same level of resonance. So mm -hmm. trying to incorporate more resonance into your voice could be something that I think would steer you away from sounding more like a child. Um, mm -hmm. If that's a goal, and he's a man, King Lion is a man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> language is Russian. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> um, it could also be that. Poor voice. And he said, "I sound like a five-year-old, but not like." I sound like some sounds were hard for me to pronounce. I'm wondering if it also could be that consonant sounds might be overpowering vowels. Remember, American English is so much more focused mm -hmm. on vowel sounds and consonants. But again, without yeah. hearing your actual audio, it's really hard to. Yeah guess um yeah but, that's always the problem <laughs> yeah. well what, what are your thoughts what's the first thing that comes to your mind um well I, I love the points that you brought up uh for sure especially the breath part um that can definitely be a contributing factor um and i do agree with like it's okay if your voice is a little higher right like people think like oh i have to like you know have a certain voice mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's like i mean if you don't like your voice you can try to change it sure that's a personal thing but you don't have to like you know manipulate past what your voice might normally be mm. um necessarily mm -hmm. but uh i'm really big on of course the mouth posture like <laughs> mm -hmm. i always gotta to go back to that um because especially based on my own experience as i've said before 
when I was teaching myself Spanish, you know, many years ago, and I didn't know mouth posture, I didn't even know what I was doing, you know, mm -hmm. learning the language. Um, it took me six months of daily practice just to start rolling my R's. Like I could tap it, of course. I mean, we have like that flap D sound, you know, it's not, not very different, but, uh, and even then it wasn't perfect. It was very forced, yeah. you know, and now I realize, oh, it's because American English is very open. Spanish is much more closed. They're mm -hmm. in the position mm -hmm. to do that. Right. And so I'm coming to the conclusion, which this can come off as like unsympathetic. I totally get it. It's not my intention, but I don't think that there are objectively any difficult sounds. Maybe the R kind of, because even like some natives don't ever develop it. But for the most part, like the thing that makes a sound most difficult is the fact that either A, you're not in the right place, you don't have the right posture right? Or maybe you might say placement, depending. Um, or you just don't have enough control and muscle built to be able to perform that sound. Uh, and that's what phase zero is all about. It sort of gives you that control and then basic muscle flexibility. So, um, you know, but it even, is very complicated. Yeah, good. I would even add a third thing is that you, you, I'm sure you've seen this. I see it all the time. I mean, people are, people are making this big of a change when in reality, they need to be making this big of a change and people aren't i don't want to say this not willing because it's not intent it's not like tr intentionally trying to be stubborn but it's mm -hmm. i mean how often it, this happens to me all the time in teaching like we're doing we're doing exercise with a student on a on a sound they're practicing different things they start to actually say it right and then they stop themselves yeah. and then revert back happens all the time happens mm -hmm. all the time so it's um you know it's I think people have in their minds again is this notions of how the sound should feel like and what it should feel like in things and that's really kind of limiting you exactly. to a degree because you're never getting past that mental block you know um 100%. so i think it's being willing to experiment but super experiment mm -hmm. sometimes it's helpful to view when you're learning a new language to give yourself mm -hmm. a new persona like you're putting on a mask and that kind of gives you more freedom to become a new yeah. personality, you know? Um, yeah, that can help for sure. Um, but I imagine it's one of those things. Yeah. Um, one thing I like to say is I like to use archery as an example because it's very visual, right? It's like if you're trying to shoot the target, it's like, of course, that's the goal, right? You're trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, it's like if you shoot and you miss, like, number one, that, I mean, failure is is the, the soil of success so like you're gonna fail you have to try again but it's not about getting it right it's about mm -hmm. exploring making little changes yeah and seeing where is it you know not yeah. where do i think it should be or you know being afraid to do it because that's just going to hold you back yeah no i, I definitely encourage people if you're stay, if you're taking pronunciation class or studying on your own exaggerate 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 because when you actually use it in natural speech you're naturally going to tone it down and so yeah. if you're not exaggerating and then you're still toning it down in your normal speech. Well, you're always, I mean, you're always yeah. going to sound the same. Right? <laughs> it's yep. never going to make that big a difference. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, Abdullah has the same problem. Uh, he says he sounds younger. Um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, almost every native feels like I'm 14 while I'm way older. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, maybe if you if you get to eighty, you'll sound like you're twenty. You know? Yeah, maybe it's not. <laughs> There's some people here that might actually like that experience, but yeah, I, I you know, that's the frustration. I get it. Who knows? Yeah. So, um, and then uh, let's see. So the R is too strong at the beginning of words. Um, your adapt constant. My guess is your consonant sounds are probably stronger than they need to be. Probably, yeah. Especially the R. The, the way I like to look at the R, since I teach the the R as a consonant and a vowel, um, like you don't have to do a no. R to make it a vowel, right? Um, the the difference there is if you make the er vowel just relatively slightly longer right so if you say earth that's fine mm -hmm. but then if you say er run it's not going to work you have to make that r like kind of short yeah. run mm -hmm. so we do a lot of exercises like if you're trying the goal is to try to weaken a consonant something i found to be helpful is saying a word like three times as fast as you can and typically one breath letting it link together so for instance if you know your your art the beginning of words is strong okay so like maybe take a word like run say run three times like run 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 and if you find that you're not saying run 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 but you're saying run 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 well now mm -hmm. you you've immediately identified that the r is your your problem because your r yeah. is way too strong you know so trying to get the vowel to be the center stage not the 
the consonant. That's a good tip. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even I didn't think about that. Something to think about. Yeah, play around yeah. with it. There you go. <laughs> um, I see my son peeking through <laughs> into my okay. office. I think yeah. I have to run. But thank you so much okay, for having no me for a bit. Yeah, have a good yeah. stream. If you guys are watching, you. you know, support the stream, like it, things like that. Share it. People will help. And yeah, yeah. we'll talk and soon, man. Go check out Fluent American as well. Appreciate that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you guys have a good stream. We'll talk here. Cool. Bye. 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 All right. So there we go. Uh, it was really great uh, to be able to do that. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, but yeah, definitely go check out his channel, guys. Um, I mean, as you know, right, he talks about placement. I don't like the concept of placement. I don't really like that. Um, we have some disagreements on certain details, but uh, as him and I have, have talked a bit before and, you know, we have the same goals in mind for you guys. So different perspectives, different whatever. We agree on a lot of things anyway. So um, I think uh, you should have to go check out his channel if, if you're not familiar with him. Um, okay, so from Secret Top 700, he's like a, a secret agent or something. Very nice. So what do you think it's, uh, so what do you think is better? Not it's better. Um, what do you think is better watching TV podcast channels on YouTube instead of downloading apps to practice? Because these days I'm feeling with those apps, I'm repeating the mistakes they're doing. Okay. Uh, and these days I don't like hearing some people non-native. So some non-native speakers uh, and then no hate. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so the, I, I do have an opinion on this, but, uh, in general, the first point I want to say is it's often not either or. Most people think either or, like what's the best thing? What's you know this, that, what's that, that? And that's not necessarily bad, but at the same time, it's usually and, right? It's usually and. Um, and in that and process, you find things that you either don't like or that don't work uh, for you, right? Because everything works, but not everything works for everybody. Um, and then guess what? You just, you don't use that thing. You tried it. Don't just like try it for a day and then be like, uh, you know, which that doesn't sound like what you're doing in this case. So, you know, give it a, a certain amount of time, like say at least a month or so or whatever to, to really see if it starts working. But if you just like hate it so much or you're not seeing the results you want, go look for something else. You know, <laughs> uh, a large part of the learning process is figuring out how you learn best and figuring out what you like to do. Um, so that being said, uh, should you be watching TV, listening to podcasts, watching channels on YouTube? Absolutely. Like you don't have to do all of those you need to get input as much input as humanly possible okay now this is going to be look a little different for everybody but you want to get input is the the backbone of skill acquisition like, period whether you get a little input try to use it get a little you know get feedback from that try to improve it sort of like a, a very output based approach or you have a very input based approach where you're sort of absorbing 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 and then later you try to use it um, either way is fine but input is the backbone, right? So um, the more input that you get, the more you're going to get the language into your brain. It's like food for your, your brain to learn English, um, especially if you're paying attention. You can't just have the radio on in the background and expect to absorb the language. It doesn't work that way. Um, it can help because you're going to tune in and out and notice some things, but you're not going to get you know fluent just by doing that. Um, but you want to get lots and lots of input as much as possible. Now, if you compare that to apps that you can like practice with, I'm, I don't know. Do you mean like AI where it's like giving you, you know, grammar corrections and pronunciation corrections, and things like that? Um, if so, I, I think AI does a pretty decent job of um, catching grammar mistakes. But it is not, I've, I've yet to see an AI capable of handling pronunciation at a sophisticated enough level. Um, and of course, my my ultimate test is the native speaker test. Um, I actually, there was somebody uh, a couple weeks ago that reached out to me. I won't name the app here. Um, but they reached out to me and they're like, hey, would you be interested in doing a collaboration, this and that, whatever. And so like, I could potentially get like money from this. I could get a sponsorship from this. And I'm like, 
this is awesome. Um, but they said that they have, it's, it's a pronunciation AI app, kind of like the Elsa speak thing, which I don't know if you've seen my review. Most people have, it, I think it brings me in the most, most, uh, subscribers to the channel, but I'm not, I, I was pretty harsh on Elsa. Um, and so I tested out this other apps, AI, and I put it through the native speaker test and it did worse than Elsa. Um, so. I'm not going to push something out to you guys and say, hey, use this awesome pronunciation app so that I can get some money. Like, I would love the money, but I really need the money, honestly. But I can't do it. I just can't do it. So um, if it's AI based, proceed with caution. Um, if it's giving you grammar feedback, it's not 100%, but it is getting to the point where it can handle that for sure. Um, If it's like, I know, I think there's one app where like you can like find people and then like send voice messages to them and stuff and they can like send voice messages back. Um, if it's something like that, I mean, the practice is good. Like, in fact, I'm, I'm going to be making a lesson sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, that's, um, I'm going to test it a bit on myself. I needed to do a little bit of final testing on it just to make sure everything comes together nicely. But uh, it's going to help you master your speaking skills. Um, as well as your pronunciation, your listening, your grammar, and your vocabulary. Uh, but it's it's both it's based on um, actually developing your speaking skills. So look out for that. But um, the one of the the core ideas of that is you have to understand that fluency is not one thing. People think of fluency and they're like, oh, he's a fluent speaker. And it's like, okay, that means that he can he can speak like a native, or he can at least speak conversationally, right? He can communicate. But what people don't realize is there's accuracy and there's automaticity, which is like the flow, like how quickly and easily your thoughts come out in in the language. In your native language, you're not fluent just because you have high accuracy. You're fluent because you also have high automaticity. Okay. And literally fluency and flow are related, right? They're actually related words. So what most people do when they're learning to speak a language which this is a very natural instinct, right? You go, you try to learn a bunch of grammar rules, you learn a bunch of words, and then you try to speak correctly. So you focus on the accuracy when that's actually backwards. You have to focus on the flow, get feedback from that flow in order to improve your accuracy. It, it doesn't work the other way around. And I know that from personal experience because I went through that with Spanish because I didn't know what I was doing. It was very slow and painful. Um, and it's going to be hard at first, no matter what, but... I could have improved a lot faster if I knew what I know now. Um, and we'll also, as I said, I'm going to be testing this on myself. So we'll see the results um, in just one week. Um, I'm just going to be testing it for one week because each um, each round of the technique lasts one week. But we'll see what happens with that. Um, so I don't know if you have any other clarifications on that secret top 700, um, like what specific apps and what you're doing. Um, but if if you feel like you're repeating mistakes that other people are doing like you feel like you're getting bad input uh because maybe they're non-natives i think maybe that's really the problem here uh it's not the worst thing like i mean you 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 can interact with with whoever it doesn't matter if they're a native or not but if you're really trying to improve your language you need to be getting natural native input as much as possible. If you get some input from somebody else that's not a native and you're speaking to them and you kind of feel like, oh, this person's making mistakes and it's affecting me, then lower your exposure to that. You know, like as long as you have a certain amount of, of natural native input, that's going to kind of balance out and you don't have to worry about it too much. But if you feel it's negatively impacting you, adjust. Like that's just what you got to do. Um, I wouldn't necessarily avoid it completely. Like it's not going to cause any long-term damage. Just, just if you get a little bit of, you know, non-native exposure. But, you know, do do what you think is is best. Um, okay, uh, Yellow Submarine or Ye Yealo. I don't know if that's spelled that way intentionally. <laughs> Maybe somebody else had the the word yellow uh, already taken. That's an interesting picture. Um, have you guys uh, ever met anyone speak like American but is not born and raised in America? Me personally, in my personal life, I 
I don't think so. <laughs> um, I've had maybe a couple students that I've worked with that like their pronunciation, maybe like occasionally on a word here or there, they'll use the wrong vowel or something. But like 99.9% .9 of their speaking is perfect. Like their rhythm is perfect. Their stress is perfect. They're, they're you know, again, with just the occasional vowel in a certain random word, um, they're good. And we're working more on like other details that aren't related to pronunciation. Um, so through that, yes, I maybe have met some people, but like in my real life day to day, no. Uh, but people like that exist, you know. Um, by the way, I've started watching your mouth posture course. It's kind of hard to control my tongue, uh, but I'm going to continue watching and practicing. Thanks so much for your work. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad you're uh, checking out the mouth posture course. Um, it's not done yet, of course. Right? You, fortunately, <laughs> you guys that are checking out the the videos that I'm posting, um, you know, earlier on, you're you're going to sort of hit a roadblock until I make more content. Uh, which the next lesson is coming soon. I have it planned for this next week. I should be able to get that done, but it's definitely going to happen uh, very, very soon. Um, so good, good. Um, make sure that you watch the update lessons as well, especially the phase zero update where I talk about that back issue um, because that that's like, I wish I would have known that, known that when I made the first uh, phase zero lesson, but I discovered it a little bit later. Um, that's really the the key and this stuff isn't easy I, i've had some people you know pick up certain things relatively quickly um i've had other people that you know they might be stuck on one particular thing like say like getting that that back tension or getting uh the center of gravity or getting a particular sound like the t sound where they might spend you know a week maybe a month uh just on that one thing and um People who work with me, usually it doesn't take that long. But I mean, if you're not even getting, you know, like if you're not working with me, you're not getting the feedback, that might take you even longer. Um, there's somebody that I'm working with, uh, actually the um, our biggest channel member, um, I'm working with him, uh, not directly in classes, but I'm sort of helping him along, giving him feedback for being um, the, that level of a channel member. And... Uh, He's making improvement for sure, but compared to the people that I work with directly, it's like 10 times slower. So, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's tough if you're trying to do it by yourself, but it is possible. My goal is to give you the ability to do as much as possible by yourself. And then, as I said, um, at some point, I want to train other teachers in my methods. And so instead of just like everybody trying to come to me, because obviously I can't teach everybody, um, there will be a place where you can go to actually get some feedback and stuff. But uh, some people do sponsorships, but it's not on a sponsorship. I know, and I hate that. Um, don't worry, Avi, I see you there. Uh, it's like you're paid for doing a review instead of just, hey, guys, it's best app in the world. Yeah, and I, I don't believe in that because um, I know, like, people will tell. People will be able to tell. And I just want to feel right about it, like, morally. But... You know, it's like, I don't see how somebody can do that. It's, it's ridiculous. Like most of the things that I recommend, like any of my affiliate links, which you can find a link in the description, <laughs> support the channel. Um, but most, most of my affiliate links and, and things that I would recommend are things that I have used. Um, so Avi is here. Welcome, Avi. Um, we also have some other people. I'm trying to get to everybody in order here, guys. Um, remember, you can always do a super chat. Uh, hopefully, that'll show up here on the stream yard. But you can do a super chat if you want me to answer you uh, more quickly. Uh, hi, I have problems with the TH sounds. Uh, if they are together at the end of the words, like in sentences. So other with uh, Bluetooth. Okay together at the end of the words like in sentences so with uh i guess would be the the example there um so the funny thing is like if you can do a th uh welcome beer um from india nice very very cool um i want to go to india someday so <laughs> uh but if you can do a th like actually do a TH, like 
especially if you have the right posture and like all that's good. So if you can do like or and it sounds good. Um, all you have to do is like if it's voiced to voiced. So the TH and with can actually be voiced or voiceless. It doesn't matter. Um, it's actually a little trick that we have. So like if the next sound is voiced, it's easy to make the TH and with voiced so that you can just continue that voice. Or if it's voiceless, just make it voiceless and continue the voicelessness. Um, so like with some, with some, instead of with some, it's a little harder to do. But if it's with the, I mean, you could still make it voiceless. You say with the, but it's actually harder even for us. So if you make it voiced with the, Okay, but then you might say, well, how do I know it's with the, not with a, because now it sounds like the is just a. Context, context is important. Um, uh, you can always enunciate it. You can say with the Bluetooth. Sometimes natives will do that to make it super clear. We'll actually just like sort of separate it a little bit, make it clear. Um, but context is really important. Um, you can also maybe try to like lengthen the TH a little bit. So if you say like, with the Bluetooth instead of with a, with a, with the, with the, just like lengthen it. That's a normal thing. Like if we have an L at the end of a word, L at the start of the next word, S at the end of the word, S at the start of the next word, we lengthen that consonant sound a little bit. So you could do the same thing with the THs, uh, as long as it's the same type of TH if they're both voiced, right? Or if they're both voiceless, you can definitely do that. Um, of course, there's the other option, which is to use the dental T and D replacement of the TH sounds. I don't know if you've heard me talking about that before, uh, but this will make your life so much easier. Um, let me bring that lesson up here uh, so I can send you the link. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bring it up. This came up. Uh, okay. Good share of a link. So this particular lesson talks just about the dental T and D as well as the dental N and like linking with 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 it, um, especially if there's like a regular T or D after it or before it. Um, I have another lesson talking about the full range of the articulation of the TH sound, which includes that, but also includes more like the lazy TH. So, uh, but you can check this lesson out uh, for the dental T and D uh, replacement. Um, it's not a normal T and D. You can't say wit. Duh. Okay, that's going to sound very informal or just wrong. Um, but if you make it flatter, especially if you put it on the teeth, because normally we don't do the T and D on the teeth. That's one big important thing to be aware of. We do it up here on the, the bump of the alveolar ridge. Um, but uh, if you make that flatter, uh, so it's like duh, duh, instead of t, duh, then, uh, or again, if you put it on the teeth, that's an easy thing to do, then you can use that instead of the ths natives do it all the time we we're not even conscious of that we do it because a dental t and d doesn't exist in english um as like an actual t or d sound uh and apparently what i get from some commenters on my videos that are english learners um they say that you know other teachers say like oh that doesn't exist or oh you shouldn't use that when i can guarantee you they themselves use use it at least like a hundred times a day and they don't realize it. Um, it's part of the, the language. It's not informal or anything like that. Um, so if you do that here, you can say with the, with the, with the. So I'm just putting it on the teeth. Again, it doesn't have to be on the teeth. It's just the easy thing. With the. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, so other with the Bluetooth. Now other, we probably use the lazy TH because that R, R is right there. So instead of going Z, we'll be like here. It's like just enough to sound like a TH other 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 with the bluetooth okay that th at the end it could be th, it could be the bluetooth bluetooth okay so you can technically always replace it with the dental but again certain combinations like if there's an er after it it's actually a little harder to like make it flat and then go back um so we'll probably do the lazy one to speak more quickly but uh that's the thing that makes makes your life a lot easier so i would check that out if, if you you haven't heard about that before um I already did that one. Edo, welcome, Edo. Um, sorry, it took me a second to get here. Uh, in one of your videos, you mentioned to pull down the back of the tongue to get a natural sound. Uh, you have any extra tips to accomplish this? Okay. Uh, I think, are you referring to the schwa or to the ah sound? 
Um, I assume we're talking about like the mouth posture and this whole thing back here or something. I'm, I'm not sure if you can clarify. Um, I want to make sure I'm talking about the right sound because you said in one of your videos, <laughs> the schwa. Okay. Uh, pull down the back of the tongue. Did I mention that? Which video was that in? As far as I can recall, I don't think I said pull it down. I said you want to let it settle down and back. Okay. You don't want to push it. You don't want to pull it. You want to let it settle down and back. Um, and that goes along with this upper part of the throat and lowering it and opening it a bit to get more space. And if you do that, the tongue is going gonna, is gonna to have the room it needs. Now, you can open this, lower this, and still have your tongue push forward. Those are two separate mechanisms. Um, but if you just try to not push your tongue forward and you're still holding things up here, now you're going to kind of be like this or something like that where you're kind of closed off and it's just not going to be right. When you get more space here, if your tongue is still pushed forward, you're just going to be out of place. You're not going to produce the right sound. But when you get that space there and you let the tongue relax down and back so you're not pushing it forward anymore, that's what gets you in that right place to say uh, 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 like that true schwa. Uh, uh, uh. So, And then from there, you can build the center of gravity on top of that. Uh, 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 so, uh, just to make sure we're on the same page, is that what you're referring to? Or did I say something else that I'm not remembering? <laughs> um, cause do I have any extra tips to accomplish this? Um, we can talk about that, but I want you to, to verify that I'm, I'm talking about the thing that you're referring to. Um, is it like pushing the back part of the tongue down? No, you don't want to push. You do not want to push. You want to let it settle. Okay. Because if you push, uh, 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 you're immediately, as soon as you push, you're going to get tension here and you're going to start producing a back vowel. Okay. You don't want that. Um, now there are right, certain sounds that you do, you can get a little tension here as long as the primary tension is where that vowel is supposed to be. That can happen. Um, what's the difference? So you don't hear a difference. Interesting. So if I say, uh, 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 this, what I'm making right now, uh, uh, that's not a sound in English. It doesn't exist. Um, maybe if you get punched in the stomach, you might make a sound like that. <laughs> um, either that or like, uh, like the high schwa. It's actually probably closer to the high, the high schwa, like in book, um, not actually a schwa. Check out my lesson on that. Um, but it's definitely not, uh, it doesn't sound like a schwa. Um, so if, if you, if you have different uh, difficulty hearing the difference between what I did there, you need to go back and do some more ear training for sure. Um, and by the way, guys, um, I see Avi's other question here. Don't worry, I'm going to get to that. Uh, one thing that I'm realizing more and more is that I need to, so the, the mouth posture course is built very much on manipulating the vocal tract right and it's you want to pay attention to the sound um don't get lost in the feeling you want to feel things but you don't want to get lost in the feeling i've had at least one student um fall into that trap where it's just like he loses it because he gets too caught in the feeling um that seems to be what's happening but i'm realizing more and more uh the mouth posture course itself will help improve your listening uh, if, if you do it right and, and you go through the, the proper process, um, your posture videos are helping a lot. Well, awesome. Very nice. Um, that's the goal. But uh, if, what was I saying? <laughs> I got distracted. I can't do that. Um, oh, yeah. the uh, I'm noticing more and more that some intentional direct ear training for like sound quality I think is going to be a required part of the course, um, especially like say things like, like right here that Abdullah uh, was asking, well, what's the difference? Um, so if if you hear uh, and you hear uh, and you're like, they sound the same, that's a problem, 
Okay. So I want to make some special ear training lessons. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do this, but I, I know that I, I'm definitely, I need to make them. It's probably going to be sooner rather than later, but um, where, for example, I will make, say, the correct sound. And then, like, say, there's like a recording, right, for like your, your, your training. So you'll like hear the correct sound. And then you'll hear, hear wrong versions that are similar. And then you'll hear the correct sound. Right. And so you can sort of get used to like, oh, okay, I know this is the correct one. And then when I hear this, 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 that's not the correct one. And so you're sort of giving your brain the little feedback it needs to target the ears on the correct one, improve your listening, which then when you go and practice, you're going to be able to better hear what you're doing. So I, I think I, that's going to be a required part of the course. That's it's, there's going to be like, there's like phase zero and then phase zero ear training, phase one, phase one ear training. Um, there probably won't be a lot for the phase one because that's really just getting that core posture, but I can maybe, you know, play with the jaw openness and help train your ears for that and whatever. Um, and then of course, through phase two with all the sounds, um, there'll be some level of ear training there as well. Um, also between say like, uh, and ah, because or uh, and like ah, because that's a common uh, issue. So uh, instead of just the regular minimal pairs, which I have um, doing sort of like stages between them where you'll hear like uh, 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 so you sort of know like everything in between is not what you want, and this and this is like the schwa and the ah, and those are what you want to hit. Um, so I think that's that sort of stuff is going to be very interesting and useful as well. Um, okay. I've got to move on here. I'm starting to fall behind. Please be patient with me uh, unless you throw up a super chat. Uh, if you do throw up a super chat and it doesn't show up because I'm on StreamYard, which it should, then I apologize. <laughs> um, I don't think I've gotten a super chat in StreamYard, so I haven't been able to, to, to verify and test that. Uh, King Lion, do you think American English and Russian are the same stress wise and rhythm wise? No. Um, I'm not like, I don't know Russian, but I've worked with a lot of Russians. Um, and they're both stress timed languages that much you know you can find that online um so they use the the, the same type of timing but just because they use the same type of timing doesn't mean that it works exactly the same so you're going to find some similarities for sure but you want to pay attention to what's different um so it's in the details it's in the, but they're they're not the same. I can tell you that they're not they're not exactly the same. Um, I don't know how different they are exactly because, as I said, I don't speak Russian, but I know they're not the same. Um, I personally know four to five people who speak just like an American, or at least so close that I'm not able to differentiate. They have worked hours on that, and two of them are good singers. There you go, proof that it's possible. Perfect. Um, okay, so and. Yeah, I kind of got lost in, in your original question, right? Any, any extra tips, right? Um, so let's backtrack just a little bit here. Do I have any extra tips? Um, other than what I've mentioned, I mean, it is what it is. Um, going back to, to what I was talking about earlier with, with Fluent American, uh, don't try to get it right. Explore. Make little adjustments. Go farther than you think you have to go, right? Um, and then listen to the quality. So like, for example, when we're trying to like open this up and lower a common mistake, whether it's this way or this way, is you end up doing something like this. Instead of, uh, you get, uh, 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 my voice is way too deep. I'm actually lowering my pitch. So I'm manipulating something that I shouldn't be manipulating. Um, and you don't know where that line is when you first do this. So you want to go farther than you have to farther than you think you, you should to find, oh, I'm starting to make my voice, which, which your voice might get a little bit deeper when you, when you shift it, that's okay. But if it's starting to get noticeably deeper where it's like actually changing your, your voice in a significant way, you know you went too far. And then you say, okay, well, that's too far. Where's the line? Okay, so you have to test these things. You have to go this way, you have to go this way, right? When we're talking about this area and figure out like, what exactly should I do there? And then if it's the tongue, you know, okay, maybe you 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 open up back here, you're letting it kind of settle down and back a bit, but maybe you forget that your jaw is too closed. That's another part too. Your jaw needs to be open enough um, when it, it, for for American English. So maybe you're saying like instead of uh, you're saying like 
uh, uh, which is good is like a short, quick schwa that'll, that'll work. But if we're trying to actually get like a good, clear sound and be like, okay, I know that's the right sound, get that jaw a little bit more open to, to the American height. Uh, 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 not, uh, 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 okay. Um, make sure you avoid ah, that's a common problem. But um, if, if your jaw is open enough and all that stuff, I mean, don't overdo that. If you do like, uh, uh, like it's impossible for me to do the schwa sound at that point. Uh, 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 I can try, but it's not going to work. So you, you can also tell me when you go too far. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to say there and I forgot what it was. Oh yeah. Um, so you might think that like, you, and you might actually feel that like, okay, yeah, I'm not pushing my tongue forward as much, but because I'm assuming, right, this isn't true for all languages necessarily, but many languages do seem to have that tongue slightly pushed forward because this is up, so you need more space back here, so the tongue pushes forward slightly to give more space. Otherwise, you're going to chark yourself and sound like this, right? So uh, because that already feels relaxed to you, maybe you can start to feel like, okay, yeah, I feel like I'm not pushing it forward as much, but especially when you shift here and now you have more space, maybe you're still pushing it forward at least a little bit. And you don't feel it yet. So you still have to play with it and experiment and really focus on that and see, am I pushing it forward? What happens if I try to completely relax it? Because it's not completely relaxed, but what happens if I completely relax it? What happens if I sort of let it fall into the throat? What results do I get? It's very scientific. You have a hypothesis, you test the hypothesis, and you see the result. If it gives you, if it gets you closer to the result you want, you made improvement, you make another change either in that same direction or a different type of change in a different direction. Um, if it doesn't give you the result you want, if it starts sounding farther from the result, you made the wrong kind of change. You make go the, you go the other way, make a different thing. It's very, very, very scientific step by step. Being able to hear it is the biggest problem. The feedback is like the big missing link that you know, sort of is the bottleneck for everybody. Um, and that's what makes it extra hard. So I need to get the, the, more of the ear training up for that. Um, but just, you know, the more that you play with it, the more that you explore and the more that you focus not just on feeling, but also hearing um, and trying to use the reference recordings that are in the Google Drive folder, uh, the uh, the better that you're you're going to, to be able to get it. Um, but it's sometimes things take a while, especially like the schwa sound, the er sound, the ah sound. These sounds might take you quite a while to get. So that's normal. Um, remember, it took me six months. Again, I was out of place. I didn't have the right posture. That's part of the problem. But it took me six months to just do da da, right? Six months. So most people would have given up. They're like, I just can't do it. I'm not talented. Okay. Well, apparently I do have some talent and it still took me six months. <laughs> Again, I didn't have the right posture. I was making it extra difficult on myself because it's really hard to do it if you're way down here to start. Um, so I'm giving you guys the tools to help make it easier for you, whether you're talented or not, because it doesn't matter if you're talented, but, um, Avi, uh, I have reached a level where my native tongue doesn't influence English as it used to. Very good. But due to poor flow of fluency, part due to my breath and other cause of poor posture, I slip out of it. That can happen. That can happen. Um, also with the flow. So breath is a big part, right? Like, like we were talking about earlier, um, you know, you don't want it to be all choppy, but part of that is the breath. And part of that is building thought chunks. Cause the, the problem is the way that languages are usually taught or the way that you go and, and you learn it, if you don't know what you're doing is it's like, okay, there's words and there's grammar and the grammar tells me how to put the words together. And that's fine. That's true. Right? Like if you're learning, if you're going from English to Japanese or Japanese to English, you have a Th those verbs go at the end in Japanese, where in English they don't. That's a pretty big significant change that you need to know about. But the the way that it's taught is it, it sort of emphasizes a lot on like, this is the grammatical structure and these are new words for you to use. And you end up, instead of focusing on the flow, you're so focused on the accuracy. And so you end up putting words together and you get really good at that right to where you can do it pretty quickly so you're, you're not saying like i um i want go i want to go no you don't have that problem anymore you say i want to go to the beach 
but you still have these little tiny micro pauses, right? And the breath can help cover this up if you do it right. But even if your breath is on point, you still might have this problem where you have these little tiny micro pauses because what you learn to do to speak is to put words together one at a time. When in me as a native and you in your native language, you don't speak that way, right? Like, what did I just say? I said, you don't speak that way. I didn't say you don't speak that way. I said, you don't speak that way. It's one big word, one big thing. You have to think of the ideas that you want to communicate, just like sounds form into syllables, form into words, and those words form into sentences. That's a unit. It's not just a bunch of words put together. It's one big unit that is its own entity in itself, right? Just like I have cells in my body, those are small little units and entities in themselves that exist. But in total, for my whole body, I am a living organism, right? And then there are other living organisms you know, around me. So it's exactly the same. And I mean exactly the same. The way that skills are built, the, 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 the secret hidden meta structure map that I talked briefly about on my currently dead other channel <laughs> that I'm going to revive later, um, it, the, 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 the way that, that all skills are structured, um, this is universal across any skill you want to learn. It's, it's the secret meta map to learning any skill. Um, there's a, a core root element and it fans out like this to more and more complex structures. So it, it mirrors how reality works, right? If you go to physics, you have like atoms, which form into molecules, which form into cells, which form into like multi-celled organisms. And then, you know, you have multiple of those organisms. So there's many humans, you know, for example, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It just goes to greater and greater chains of complexity where the smaller pieces do still exist. So words still exist. But when we're at the sentence level, when we're at the body level, the words are functioning as a whole not as individual units. That's how you want to think of this and get those thought chunks flowing. So it's not just the breath. It's not just the posture. Those are, th those are going to be things that definitely affect it. But one of the biggest things you can do is to say, how do I stop putting words together and instead communicate my ideas as chunks of information? Okay. And once you start doing that, you're going to notice a huge improvement. In fact, this, this new technique to master your speaking that I've been sort of teasing that I'm going to be testing on myself to, um, to, you know, just confirm certain details, um, that is designed to get you to do what I just explained. Um, and I'm going for the lowest level. So even if your speaking skills are really, really low, it's definitely going to help you a lot. But if you're more intermediate and you can already speak, some of the exercises won't really apply too much to you, but the basic technique and lots of things that are going to be in that lesson are still going to help you. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, as I said, I got to test it on myself. So, <laughs> uh, Perfect. Um, my question is, how can I move my tongue to get that settled down in placement? Well, I think you're thinking of it wrong, right? Because we're talking about the default posture. You move your tongue to produce a sound. But the, the sound that's produced, the true schwa, okay, not the center of gravity where we push down on the center and then make it, you know, the special American English thing. Um, but like the, 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 the core underlying factor of the posture where this is in place. And then if the tongue is just resting, not like in the full posture, but like actually resting, resting to make more of a true schwa, um, the sound that will naturally and effortly be produced if everything is in the right place will be, uh, uh, uh it just happens. You don't have to try to produce it. It will happen. If you're not producing it, it means something is off here, something is off here, or something is off here. Okay. Um, and I know that that is not, some people are not going to find that very helpful, <laughs> but it is what it is. You're trying to find a new normal. Okay. Um, and don't be confused. Don't be misled by when other teachers say like, oh, the schwa is relaxed. It's like, that is very English biased. Because to us, yes, it is very relaxed. But if you hold this a little tighter and higher, 
and your tongue is pushed forward, guess what? That feels relaxed to you. That's your default posture. So then when a teacher says, oh, yeah, just relax, just open up and relax. And you say like, eh, eh, eh. You're relaxing, but you're in the wrong posture. Just like like I could I could have my posture like this. I'm relaxed. Or I could have my posture like this. So pretty relaxed. Two different postures. <laughs> right. Um, that's a stupid example, but you get the point. So. Don't think of it as trying to move your tongue in a certain way. Think of how can I put my vocal tract into the right position so that my tongue, wherever, how can I phrase this? How can I position my vocal tract, including the tongue, into the right position to where the sound naturally happens? Okay. Now that's technically true for any sound, I guess we could say, but especially for this, this true schwa sound. Okay. Um, and 90% of it is here. Um, and again, it's also not completely relaxed because as I'm learning more and more and I'm confirming more and more with the people I'm working with, when you hold this up and tighter, not only do you have to bring it down, but you also, and sort of, there's some things you have to relax for sure, but then you also don't want it to come all the way down here. You don't want to say, uh, if I completely relax, past my own posture. Uh, 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 I'm not producing a schwa sound. I'm not producing any English sound, but I'm completely relaxed. Okay. So you have to open up, you have to relax some things that are holding you up and tight, but then you also have to build certain muscles that you probably don't have yet in order to hold it a little lower and hold it a little more open without going too far to, to make it like, uh, where it's really deep. Um, so I would focus mostly on this area and then, uh, you know, try to make sure the tongue isn't pushed forward. You're not sliding into ah or something like that. Um, it's, it's complex. It's, it, it is, there's lots of moving pieces, unfortunately, but if you tackle it piece by piece, you focus mostly on getting this set up, right? Uh, that's probably going to give you the biggest benefit. Um, that'd be cool. You need to do that. Yeah. Okay, you know. Um, I mean, I didn't push down the, did I skip anything? Let me try and skip anything. No, okay. Uh, you didn't say to push down the back of the tongue in the video, not posture phase zero. Okay. Yeah, so that's exactly the thing, right? You don't, you don't want to push it down. You want to let it settle. Okay. Um, you're trying to find a new way to hold the tongue. <laughs> It is what it is. Like, there's going to be some some muscle that you have to develop, some muscle that you have to relax. That's just, just what it is. Um, I know that's not the most useful, but aside from what I've described in the those lessons, um, I mean, I can I can only say it in so many different ways and try to give so many other extra little tips. Um, hello from Bangladesh. Welcome, Nazrul. Welcome, welcome. Um, Habib is also here. Hello, my lovely teacher from Afghanistan, right? Cool, cool, welcome. So we have somebody from uh, India, somebody from Afghanistan, somebody from Bangladesh. I like it, very nice. I always like to hear where you guys are from. Um, oh, Abdul is giving a correction there. Yeah, so I am, or I'm. Good little catch there, uh, Abdullah. Uh, Mr. Bigger, Mr. Go Home is here. Mr. Bigger, Mr. Go Home. I put two misters in your name. <laughs> I just changed your name. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Bigger, Go Home. Hi, Josh. What does it mean when someone says don't take it for granted or don't take someone for granted? Yeah, so I used that earlier. Um, what does it mean? That's a good question, actually. Um, this is, uh, I had a plan to make this uh, one of the idiom of the week videos, which you guys, most of the people here probably don't know I made those videos because I only have like five of them and um, I discontinued it to focus on the pronunciation course. Uh, but I will have like more idiom videos and, and things like that in the future as well. Um, but I wanted to use this one uh, as an example in one of those videos because uh, it's actually very interesting. So when you take something for granted, Okay, what does mean? What does it mean for granted? Okay, so to grant means like to give. So if something is granted, it's given. 
and we also use that language as well. If we say, okay, I'm, I, we can take that as a given, meaning like, of course, this is true, right? So like if, if I have ice and I put it in a pot and then I light a fire under it, it's given, it's a given <laughs> that the ice will melt. That's what's going to happen, right? Um, now, something that is given or something that's a given uh, as a noun and something that is granted, they're not used exactly the same way, but they mean basically the same thing. Um, and you might hear something like a, like a, a research grant, right? So some scientist goes to the government, they're like, hey, I want to do this research. And the government says, okay, here's some money that you don't have to pay back. If it's a loan, you have to pay it back, right? But a grant, like literally, it's it's given, right? So it's not given temporarily to pay back. It's here's money. You don't have to pay it back. So that's called a grant, a research grant, okay? Um, so when we take something for granted, for, which I'm going to have a lesson on the logic of four later when I get back to that course after I have an editor. Um, the logic of four is very complicated, but one of the, the, the key parts of it is the idea of a base, a basis, right? So we talk about exchange. I'll give you $1 for this Apple exchange. Okay. So one base trade for another thing. My, my dollar became an Apple. Okay. Um, and that could be applied in many different ways, not just exchange. So if something, if we take something for granted, we're saying that that's that's the ground I'm standing on. This is also connected to on underneath the surface. That's the platform I'm standing on. So um, earlier I said that the um, I think we were talking about the breath uh, or something like that, and we say like, oh yeah, we we take it for or no, it was, I think it was the openness. Like we take for granted that things are just more open in in, in English or whatever it is, um, which means that natives. Number one, it, it just may not even occur to us that that's what we're doing. And even if it does, we don't realize because since we're a native language, a native language, a native speaker of English, American English specifically, if you're coming from Russian or Spanish or whatever, where it's not as open, we don't know what that feels like, right? Unless we've gone and developed that posture. Um, so it's easy to say, oh, yeah, just open up, just relax. Right, because we're taking it for granted that that's an easy thing to do, even if the reality is that it's not easy to do, right? Or or some some variation, some detail of that. Um, so it's like taking a fact as true, and then you stand on that fact and say, "This is uh, something that I'm basing my my thinking on, whether it's true or not." Okay, so that's the granted thing. It becomes a platform that you stand on. Um, so when we say don't take it for granted, we're saying uh, th that that phrase itself is commonly used like in life in general. So like, you know, it's like we live our lives and this and that, whatever. And then, you know, like you have family, right? And uh, somebody might say like, oh, don't take family for granted because maybe everything's good now. But then, you know, what if, which hopefully this doesn't happen, but, you know, what if tomorrow, like somebody gets injured very seriously in, in your family or, or something like that. It's like, oh my God, like this person has always been around perfectly fine and healthy and they're part of my family. And like now they're in serious danger in the hospital. And it's like, right, you take, you took their presence for granted. Like, oh yeah, they're always going to be here. Like, I don't have to value that. I don't have to, you know, and we don't consciously think of it, of course. It's like, well, of course I value my family. But to actually bring that in consciously is not taking it for granted. Right. Where if you just go day to day and you don't reflect and say like, oh, yeah, I'm really glad to have, you know, my family, um, your kindness are like taking it for granted in a way because um, you're not appreciating it uh, as much as maybe you should. So this is just an example uh, but you, you should get uh, get what that means. Uh, if you want further elaboration or clarification, I can go to that. Edo is from Colombia. Very nice. Colombia. Colombia. Very nice, very nice. Uh, one of my students uh, is actually, um, he's not from Colombia, but he's currently in Colombia, which is uh, very nice. Um, I've never been to Colombia myself, but it's uh, I probably will visit one day. I want to go to Argentina and Brazil. I know Colombia is like right there, so I'll probably stop into Colombia. Uh, my most problematic sound is R. Yeah, you and everybody else, <laughs> uh, especially followed by a vowel. Uh, like in hero, order, orderly, um, there's literally two of them there in here as well. Um, 
and many more that doesn't even come to my mind that don't many more that don't plural uh yeah it's a common problem it's a very common problem uh the mouth posture is going to help you with that um the r sound isn't until group two uh well I mean, of course it's in group two all sounds are in group two but it's it's not until uh you know yeah in group two of phase two um and i'm going to be making the group one of phase two uh, lesson soon. So you're going to have to hold on a little bit for the R as, other than my main R lesson that I've talked about before. Um, but again, focus on the pieces, right? If you can do, um, if you could do the R and then you could do the vowel separately, like the R and the O. Okay, great. Um, I said followed by a vowel. But regardless of the order, whether it's before the R, after the R, can you do those pieces individually? If you can't, then that's not good, right? <laughs> if you can, uh, then you focus on the transition. Like, how do you actually go from this sound into that sound, you know, without breaking the posture, with still sounding clear, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's literally like building a house. Like you build the, you know, maybe the, the foundation first, it's the mouth posture, and then you start building around it and you start linking things together so that it's like one solid structure. Um, Allison... Deniz, probably said that wrong, sorry. Um, a, just just the letter A. Okay. <laughs> I am from Brazil. BR, yes. Very good. Uh, muito bom. Uh, eu, eu falo um pouco de português. Uh, <laughs> mice, I don't know if mice or mas. I always get that confused. Um, I think it's mice. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> uh, Portuguese is on my long list. Um, I want to learn it for sure. It's very interesting. Um, I listen to some Portuguese music. I love um, uh, Paula Fernandes. Um, she's like my favorite Portuguese singer. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, Wendell, bring in all the questions. Um, I wanted someone very much to teach me English. Uh, well, I have, so really quick here for Allison, um, I have tons and tons of lessons. Um, Brazil, Gus, this is very much a friend who helped me. Okay. Uh, I have tons, tons and tons of lessons that, that you can watch. Um, tons of courses here. Well, I'm going to have tons of courses here. Um, a lot of it right now is in pronunciation. There will be more for other things. I'm starting to kind of delve a little bit into that. Um, but yeah, uh, just you know, hang out. Uh, if you have any particular questions, let me know, and we can go from there. Um, but yeah, Wendell. Hello, Wendell. Does the word resource have two pronunciations? Yeah, you can say resource. You can say resource. So I don't have enough resources. I don't have enough. Um, probably say like resources. Well, see, yeah, it's a complicated thing because there's like there's resource. And then there's like resourcefulness and sometimes the pronunciation might change a little bit because <laughs> there's re, re. So it can get a little complicated, but yeah, resource or resource, you'll hear both of those. Um, I recommend the S personally, but both exist. Um, does resource have two pronunciations you choose between two? Uh, I don't think there's any regional difference, no. Um, there might be could be like some people from some places always say it one way, but I've heard both. Um, does the word bottom have two pronunciations? No, it's just one. Ba and then flap D. Um, remember, it's the flap D. There's no such thing as a flap T. Spelled with a T, but it's a D sound. Don't be confused. Focus on sound, not spelling. Uh, does a native speaker sometimes use a pronunciation and sometimes the other one in different context or different, forgot the R there, or different time? Okay, does a native speaker sometimes use a pronunciation? So one pronunciation in some cases or contexts and a different pronunciation in other contexts. Okay, something like that. Uh, you're going to have to give me some examples and clarify because I have an idea of what you mean there, but it would be nice if we had some examples to work with. Uh, is the T in participant fully? You know why there? It's an E sound, fully. Uh, is the T in participant fully pronounced aspirated T as in time? 
Where's the stress? That's all you got to ask. Where's the stress? Participant. Participant. There's the answer. <laughs> the stress is on T. So yes, it's going to be just like time. Participant. Time. Time. Participant. Okay. Um, good. Man pan the ab before and m. Does that happen with ab before or aval before r? Okay, so the ab before er. This the way that I teach you guys. Um, there are some Americans who still use an r colored a, ah, and they'll say our ah, parents, parents, something like that. Most Americans uh, don't do that anymore. If you like the sound of it, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but the way I teach you is that what happened to that, instead of a, ah, it went to a. Eh. So now anything that was air, ah, it becomes air. Eh. So you don't even have to use the a ah vowel anymore. Um, so that's what you should do for that. Parents. Uh, things line in advance. No problem. Um, okay, we'll into that. Uh, Abdullah, I need to move my tongue in a certain way to get a sound. True schwa is a sound. So how can I get the sound in your video? Mouth posture, you introduce the concept to us of back of the tongue, middle of the tongue, front of the tongue, and every in each of these parts, move upward, downward, forward, backward. Uh, this is the way to produce any sound right or wrong. How can I use that to get the true schwa? Thanks for your effort. Okay, so... First thing, as clarification, just make sure we're on the same page. So we talk about the three parts of the tongue, right? Like, let's say, for example, um, the uh, the front of the tongue down. Like, maybe, say, like, for the E, where you might have some curve there or something, like, you're never going to do just this. Like, eh, 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 like, maybe it can help you get the ass sound or whatever, but, like, to just curl this down like that, that's not a sound in itself, right? So the purpose of doing the directions um, is to, number one, build greater awareness. Number two, build greater control. Uh, and part of the way that that control gets built is by helping to build up more muscle control in the tongue that you may not have because your native language has, you know, developed certain parts of your tongue and, and your throat and whatever that you need for that language. But there might be some sounds like the er sound, very common example, uh, where you may not, you literally might not have the muscle or, or fine enough muscle control in order to produce the sound. Okay. So when we do like middle upward, that is the first step of helping to kind of start to develop that muscle if you don't have it. But also, even if you do have it, have it, if you do have it, um, being able to just like control that independently, because when we do the er, as we'll see in, in group two, um, er is in the middle of the tongue. It's going to be up like this. doesn't matter what the tip is doing as long as you're not touching. Um, but then also back here, you need to keep that center of gravity here. And you also need to um, make sure that you're not blocking off with the back of the tongue like er, er, er. so you need to be able to have space here as well as this openness back here in addition to what you're doing with the middle and so being able to control those two things independently uh even just conceptually thinking of three parts of the tongue instead of how do i produce the er okay well it's in the middle of the tongue so i know i have to do that but i still can't produce the sound well maybe the back of the tongue is in the way <laughs> You know, and so you have to be able to to control multiple pieces at, at the same time. Um, now, your point here, so you say, I need to move the tongue in a certain way to get a sound. Yeah, okay. The true schwa is a sound. Yes. But when you have... When you have the posture held correctly, there's going to be a particular sound that 
is naturally produced. It's like a, a default sound, sort of, right? Um, and I've already verified this through Spanish, um, just speaking with natives, uh, which their center of gravity is up here. So, I mean, I've talked about how to get the schwa and right there's there's the range for the schwa, everything from the true schwa through the center of gravity through the, the upside down v that's all counts as one thing here right because in order to get the full american english posture you have to also push down to get the center of gravity here that's uh not just uh uh okay but in order to get that true schwa without having to worry about the actual full posture here you have to get this set if you get this set and the tongue just sort of settles into place it will naturally produce that sound. If it's not producing that sound, either something is off here, or maybe you're actually adding tension to the tongue where it shouldn't be. So um, I've worked with a couple of people where like this starts to get in place, but then they start, the sound is actually kind of up here. They actually have a little bit of, of tension this way. And they're saying like, uh, 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 or like, uh, uh, uh. So it's just like a little forward, it's a little off. Use your ears. Again, this goes back to the ear training. I know it's 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 hard, but use your ears combined with the feeling, uh, which takes practice. But uh, in order to hear, okay, am I making that that a uh, sound like what you hear in the recording, or are you making something that's slightly off of that? Um, so there might be certain little details of your native posture that you do need to adjust. Uh, and, you know, I've talked, I, I have several lessons on the schwa. I, I, phase one talks about building that full center of gravity, but uh, like it's in the middle of the tongue. It's right there. So like, that's what you're shooting for. Um, so if, if, you, if you put tension this way, it's going to be off. If you put tension this way, it's going to be off. So you need it to be very, very light tension, like right in the middle. Um, but everything else needs to be in place. Um, Cause even if you get that right in the middle, if everything else is not in place, let's say I do like, uh, 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 it might even sound schwa like, and the IPA might even represent it with a schwa symbol. Cause that's a common thing. Like the Russian schwa, the British schwa, the American schwa, the, uh, the French schwa, they all, uh, I haven't verified French, but I'm pretty sure it's the same thing since there's a French schwa, they all use the same symbol and yet they don't sound the same. It's part of the problem with the IPA. Um, because the posture gives a different quality to it. So again, focus mostly on this part and then making sure your tongue doesn't push forward. Um, that, that's, that's going to be the biggest key. And then from there you can build the full center of gravity. Um, D2G, it makes a lot of sense. Thanks. You're welcome. What's the difference between dancer and choreographer? A dancer dances, a choreographer choreographs. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure choreography is, it, it's more like the, the planning, the setup, the, the guidance for, uh, for doing something. Um, and I don't think that even has to be dancing. Like I think, um, like say like a sword fight could be choreographed. Um, so it's it's more like the planning of of the the, the action and the steps and the, what's going to happen. Uh, where dancing is just dancing. Um, dancer who dances, choreographer who choreographs. Yeah, <laughs> said the same thing that I did. Very good. I didn't even see your comment there. Perfect. <laughs> um, Secret top seven hundred. Are you saving the live stream because the last ones I've lost and now I have to go. Besides, thank you. So okay, so hopefully you're still here. Sorry, I just got your comment uh, three minutes ago. Uh, yes, on YouTube. That's where this is streaming to all the live streams are saved right going back all the way through like last year or whenever i started it um so you you can always catch the replay later it's not a problem i'm also going to be i try to clip out little clips and post those individually as well but uh yeah so thanks for stopping by have a good time and hopefully you can join us next week uh, i finally caught up with the chat so that's good um I'm super busy today, guys. Like, you have no idea. Um, I have up to another maybe hour or so um, at the most. I probably shouldn't even go that long. 
But uh, if we don't have any more questions and we're kind of dying down here, uh, I'm probably going to go earlier. Uh, how do I know if my tongue is pushed forward? Any signals I speak Spanish? <laughs> well, if you speak Spanish, you know your tongue is pushed forward because <laughs> that's what Spanish does. Um, but yeah, how can you tell like the, okay, it's a horrible example, but let's imagine that you've never moved this finger. Okay. So then you don't know what it's like to move this finger. Okay. Now let's say one day you say, I want to move this finger. And so you focus on it, you focus on it, and then you start a little bit, oh, it's starting to move, right? It's starting to move. And then you start, okay, this is what it feels like to move my finger. Okay. I know it's a stupid example, but I'm trying to give something simple here to visualize. If your native posture pushes the tongue forward, that feels relaxed. Okay. Because it's part of your normal posture. So to you, it doesn't feel like it's pushed forward. That's the problem. So how do you do that? Well, you have to play with it. You have to experiment. You have to um, also listen because the listening is going to help as well. Um, it, was, it was actually really funny because one of the, there's one student I'm working with that um, early on when we were still in, in, uh, in phase zero, uh, I think it was phase zero, it was either phase zero or the start of phase one. Um, and I hadn't mentioned the tongue being pushed forward quite yet um, because it didn't sound like she really had too much of a problem with that. Um, like she didn't have a super thick accent to begin with, but definitely room for improvement. And um, I hadn't gotten to that point yet. And when I, when I actually mentioned it, I was like, it sounds like your tongue is pushed forward. She was like, how can you hear that? How do you know? Like I, I just the other day realized that my tongue is pushed forward. Okay. You play with it, you practice it, you, you just have to like, okay, if it's relaxed, push forward, let me try Like, actually, like to get the result, you don't want to push it down and back. But to experiment and start building feeling and awareness here, go ahead and push it back. See how it feels. That That's part of why we do the four directions with the back of the tongue, because it helps you bring awareness to that so that you can kind of feel. And then it, as you're paying attention, when you're trying to do like, uh, if it comes out like, uh, 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 and then you say, okay, well, let me go back and let me try to actually move the back of the tongue back a little. Uh, 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 you might start to get a little closer and you're like, oh, okay. So that's kind of what my tongue being pushed forward feels like. So you just play with it. You experiment, you, you try this and try that, and you're going to start building more feeling for it. Um, but it might not happen overnight. Um, again, don't try to get it right. Obviously that's the goal. That's, that's long-term at the, you know, at the end of the day, that is what you're trying to do. But in order to get there, you have to focus on um, exploring, playing with things, because that's what's going to get you to the goal. You can't just go straight to the goal most of the time. You have to figure out how to get to the goal. And the only way to do that is to explore and play, discover things. And then you'll be able to actually get the goal. Um, because there are sub skills involved. People just think like, oh, you could just produce the sound. It's like, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But there are sub skills underneath that allow you to manipulate things in a certain way. And if you haven't built those sub skills, um, which is part of what phase zero is designed to, to give you that it's, we're actually skill building. It's not just moving your, your tongue around. You're actually building certain skills you're going to need later. Um, but when you build those certain skills, then you you have greater ability to feel things and to change things as you need to. Um, and that's, what's going to get you to the goal. Okay. So that's the best I can say. Um, listen closely to the sound. You're going to start hearing when it's pushed forward because, and I know that for a fact, because now any student I'm working with at any point, I can hear if their tongue is pushed forward. Now, of course I get lots of input working with many different people. And so it's, it's trained my ear for what that sounds like. Um, but it, it, it eventually it starts becoming very, very obvious if you're paying close attention. Um, so, okay. So, uh, I know, I know you don't mean to, but it sounds to me that you either didn't get what I meant or you don't want to answer me something like beating around the bush. I'm asking how to produce 
you're telling me feel it. I hate reading books when you need read books. Asking how can I do that? How can I stop hating books? How can I do that? Um, how can I produce this schwa sound? Sorry for the harsh tone. No, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I want to know how. Well, that, that's what I was saying. Uh, the, the way that... Okay, so maybe I should have elaborated a little bit on this. So I have... I, I've talked many times about how to produce a... Okay, so that's the information of how to produce it. Right? You can go watch those lessons. Like, that's how you do it. Um, I can, I mean, I can give the whole lesson here and repeat everything that I've said before. I don't think that's very useful. So there's that. Okay. Now, if you go through that and you still don't get the result. Okay. So that's probably why we're here, right? Because I'm sure you've seen those. And then that goes back to my other point that I was just telling, um, Edo, you have to play with it, right? Like say, so sometimes what I, I like to do a little magic trick with some of my students, um, it doesn't always work, but usually it does, where uh, they say they have a sound in, in their language that doesn't exist in English, right? Maybe it might be kind of similar to an English sound, but I like to try to get a sound that doesn't exist in English. And the, the little magic trick I like to do is um, I'll pick that out and I'll say, say that sound. And I'll, I'll have them say it several times and I'll listen very closely and I'll try to map it. Okay, that's a skill. Mapping what you hear onto your mouth, that's a skill that you can develop, okay? Uh, the mouth posture course is designed to help you kind of try to do that, especially phase zero. That's sort of the beginning of building that map. Um, now, everybody's brain works a little bit differently. Maybe that just doesn't happen for you. I don't know. But um, I'll hear the sound. That'll activate things in my brain based on what I'm hearing, in order to kind of feel without even moving my tongue yet, just kind of feel, okay, based on what I hear with this sound, I'm probably going to have to use my tongue in this way. And I can actually start to kind of feel like, even if I'm not moving my tongue, I can start to feel, okay, the sound feels like it's, it's probably going to be around here. And I'll have them say it a few times and then I'll actually try it myself. Usually it might take me two or three tries to actually get it. Sometimes I don't get it because it's just too difficult. I don't quite have the muscle. Maybe my posture is way off, whatever. Um, but quite frequently, um, with the, the people that I've, I've done this with, um, I can actually produce either the perfect sound or a near perfect sound with just that little bit of feedback and mapping. Okay. Now, why do I mention that? Because if you don't have that skill yet, which is perfectly fine, you haven't developed it, uh, and you're not familiar enough with your vocal tract and how to manipulate things. I could, and I've done this actually in, in my teaching career, I, I could explain 10 different ways or try to explain 10 different ways, 10 different angles of how to get the schwa sound. And no phone, I'm not talking to you. And at the end of the day, maybe none of them work for you. The way that I tend to explain things, a lot of people leave really great comments saying like, oh, the way you explain it, I finally got it, this and that, whatever. And so that's great. Um, but for some people, even people I've worked with directly, they just don't quite seem to be able to get it. Um, and so then I'm like, well, how do we do this? Because <laughs> I can't think of anything else to do. Well, at the end of the day, right, I'm just a guide. I can explain 10 different ways to do it but you have to feel it. So as far as the explanation goes, I've explained that in other places of how to produce it. What then is left is for you to play with it, explore, um, listen very closely, listen, uh, feel the feeling, make little tiny micro adjustments. Okay, don't just go like, uh, 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 uh. Just don't just like shoot randomly in 10 different places in the dark. That's not how you do it. You try it, you start. So let's say you start with like, uh, 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 and you're like, okay, I know that's not right. Okay, maybe you think that's right, but let's assume that you can hear that and that's not right. Okay, 
So then you say, uh, uh, okay. Then you say, well, let me, what's something that I can change? So we know this area might be a problem. We know the tongue being pushed forward might be a problem. We know the sound is supposed to be in the middle. So we have an idea of what the pieces should be, but based on what you're producing, those pieces aren't in place. Okay. You're not doing something right. So you say, okay, let me change something. Now you want to do this in a very controlled, methodical fashion. Don't change one thing here and then go back and then change something over here. No. Let's say, let me, let me just focus on, uh, let me focus on, on this area. Cause I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm trying to tighten it up a little bit. So I say like, uh, 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 okay. So now let me try to open this a bit. Uh, 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 uh. Now there's a little difference in sound. Again, if you can't hear it, I know ear training, that's the bottleneck. The feedback is important. That's kind of the big problem, but provided Let's just, for the sake of, of explanation and argument, let's say that, okay, you can hear, that sounds a little better. It sounds a little more open. It sounds a little clearer. You're listening to the, not just the sound itself, but the quality of the sound. Okay. So, uh, 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 sounds kind of restricted. Uh, 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 starts to sound a little bit clearer, a little bit more open. Again, it's subtle. I know it's hard. So you say, okay, well, that seemed to be a positive change. Now let's say you keep going. So you're like, you're up here and you say, uh, 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 okay. You went too far. Now you're just lowering your pitch. Okay. So you find that line. Oh, okay. So I know that I, if I go down this far, it sounds clear. It sounds clear. It sounds clear. And then when I get down to here, it starts to sound too deep, too heavy. So don't go that far. Okay. Now you found how to fix this piece. Now you say, okay, well, I know it should also be a little more open. So let me try that. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, so you lower it. Uh, 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 okay, we have that in place. Uh, 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 now we try to open this a little. Uh, 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 keep in mind, I'm keeping all this in place. I'm not moving anything here. I'm not letting anything change here. I'm just trying to focus on changing this and then changing this. And I'm doing it little by little, making sound, 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 sound as I make progressive change going forward. Now, in this case, it's straightforward. I'm trying to give you a simple example where it's like, I'm just going in one direction until I find it. You might go in one direction and it's going the opposite way. And then, you know, you have to go a different direction, make a different kind of change. Um, so then, okay, now this sounds open, this sounds clearer, but the sound still isn't there. So you say, okay, well, this part seems like maybe it's better. I'm getting a better quality of the sound because we know it should sound very open and not restricted. Okay. So then you say, well, maybe my tongue is pushed forward. So we go. Uh, 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 uh. So I'm just trying to let my tongue sort of settle down and back. Uh, 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 uh. Now we're starting to get closer. Sounds a little bit better. It's not. Uh, 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 uh. And we're actually in the territory where a quick, short little true schwa, that would work, but it's not quite perfectly pronounced yet. So then you say, okay, well, I feel like this is back. I feel like this is open, but it's still not quite right. So maybe the, maybe I'm sort of a little off place here. Maybe I'm not quite in, in the middle yet. And so you kind of got to play around with that. You make little changes like, uh, 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 uh. Uh, oh, that's sounding better. Okay. Again, streamlined, simple example. I'm just trying to give you a, a simple thing without all the variables and possibilities that can you know go wrong. But that's the basic process. Okay. You just keep doing that. You test a piece. If it gets better, you keep going. If it gets worse, you stop. You go back. Uh, go back a step. Okay. And then as you change this piece, you change that piece. You change that piece. You find where it is. Um, cause I cannot give you the sound only you can find the sound. I can guide you. I can give you tips. I can give you ways to think about it. I can give you the, what to look for, but I can't go reach into your vocal tract and say, do this. Right. Um, okay. So I know there's some other comments here, but, um, I, I want to continue this with Abdullah really quick. Um, so you're telling there's no way to get it. You need to play with it by using these concepts until you get your schwa. If that the case, then fine. I get it now. Oh, that's the case. Okay. Yeah. Essentially, essentially. And for some people that's going to be easier than for others. Okay. Um, but it's, th this isn't just for pronunciation in language learning. This goes for the same, like with say like the guitar, 
Now, in pronunciation, pronunciation is a little special because you already speak one language, right? You already have a pattern and a, and a, a system built, and you're trying to manipulate that into a different default pattern. That's kind of hard to do because you're trying to overwrite that in, in a new language. Um, but let's say like the, the guitar, you're learning how to play the guitar. Like if it could be down to technique, like the exact way that you're pressing on the strings to get like the, the, the sound to ring out clearly or not, or it could be just like, maybe you're not hitting the right sounds. You're not hitting the right notes, or you're sort of like muting the wrong, you know, certain strings that shouldn't be muted because you're accidentally touching them or things like that. And how do you fix that? Well, you make little changes. You say, okay, I got to make sure that I push this down really hard here. I get this, this chord pattern. Right. And then as you're, say you're learning the, the A chord on the guitar, right? You, you push down the way that you're pushing down, you get better at it. You start building up calluses. Okay. It becomes a little easier. Um, but then once you have that pattern ingrained, it, it just happens, right? Um, so you start off not knowing how to do it. And it doesn't matter, like if it's, if it's knowledge, if you're learning history, I can say, here's a fact, put that in your brain, you have that fact, you can go tell somebody else that fact. That's how learning knowledge works. But skill is different. Nobody can give somebody a skill. Okay, there's a disconnect. I can't give you a skill. I can point in the right direction. I can explain things in a way that make it, maybe make it easier to understand. But if you don't actually try, make little changes, and figure out how to do it, you're never going to be able to do it. That's the only way to build the skill. <laughs> Um, so you might have the conceptual knowledge. This is the big problem with like grammar and vocabulary. People keep learning words. They keep trying to learn a bunch of grammar rules, memorize all the stuff, thinking that they're going to be able to speak one day. That's not how it works. Okay. It can help. Sure. If you know all this grammar and vocabulary, that definitely helps, you know, compared to not knowing anything, but it's not going to give you the skill. Okay. Um, so that's my whole point. Yeah. Okay, going back up a little bit, where was I? Avi, what exercises would you recommend for the tongue training? I'm not keeping timestamps. I need to keep timestamps. I don't think I need to do that rant. I probably should clip that, clip out that rant, but oh well. Uh, what exercises would you recommend for the tongue training? I have lips trilling, lip trilling. Why would you trill your lips? Um, tongue push-ups. What the heck are tongue push-ups? Circling your gums with lips, kind of. Okay, so, well, no, <laughs> the first thing, <laughs> two of these you've mentioned lips, and you're asking about tongue training. So I, I, maybe I'm just not familiar with the specific terminology that we're referring to here, but I'm kind of confused. So if you can elaborate on that, maybe you already have, um, I don't know what it's called. You can, there are some English friendly apps. I don't know if that's related to something else. I think it's related to something else. Uh, elaborate on this. Um, but what I will say, phaser of the mouth posture course. That is literally, I mean, it also goes into the throat. Um, but phaser of the mouth mouth posture course is literally like its entire almost entire existence is training your tongue. <laughs> like it's a tongue training lesson. Um, in addition to that, the whole mouth posture course is in some way a tongue training course. The entire course will train your tongue is for each individual specific sound. You're going to see more of that when I make the first lesson for phase two, when we actually start building some of the sounds. Um, but for the phase zero lesson, that's just building a foundation. Uh, and then the phase one is just getting the core posture itself. Um, so partially hang on, but if you haven't seen phase zero, go check out phase zero. Um, the phase zero isn't the only thing to do. It's just sort of a systematized step-by-step -step way that I thought of to help give my natural tendency and ability uh, to other people. Like in just like 
do this process and you will develop a similar type of uh, basic level of skill to what I have to, to try to find sounds. Um, then on top of that, you have to add micro adjustments when you're trying to tune a specific sound. But if you don't have that first, then uh, the it's, it's, it's a lot harder to control things to do those micro adjustments. Um, can you remind what's the right position for the back of the tongue? Not push forward. <laughs> uh, I mean, your jaws is, it needs to be a bit more open by default. Okay. It depends on your native language. Uh, apparently in German and Portuguese, it's actually open more or less like in uh, American English. But in Spanish, for example, you tend to hold the jaw more closed. Russian tends to hold the jaw more closed. Um, so you need that because that's going to affect the space here a bit. Um, so the, the back of the tongue might be a little bit lower. Now you're not trying to push it lower. You're probably going to have to do an ah sound if you do that. But it's naturally you're going to have a little more space if your jaw is a little more open. Okay. Then um, you don't want to push forward. You want to just sort of settle down and back. Don't let it fall into the throat. Like if you start going ah, okay, you hear that restriction. You start feeling the tongue is like, oh, blocking the throat. You don't want to do that either. So you you want you want to sort of hold. You want just enough tension and 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 stability to sort of like hold the back of the tongue on the top of the throat. It's not pushed forward. It's not you know relaxed falling back into the throat. It's like just right there. Uh uh uh. Okay. Um, there might be a little bit of degree of error there, but. That's kind of how it feels and how I picture it, especially if you're coming from a language that pushes the tongue forward, you're, which is is technically a small thing, but you're kind of eh, right? You're not like sitting right on top of the throat. You're actually kind of pushed forward. And this is also tighter enough as well. So if you, when you bring everything down, it's like, it's just going to stack. Okay. Um, I was wondering, so my whole entire life, I haven't had a lot of people to socialize with. And ever since I've been diagnosed with depression and anxiety, that reduces me. Uh, so I was wondering, is it possible for me to, yeah, speak too fast. Is it possible for me to eventually be able to fit in with everyone, be able to keep up a casual conversation like everyone else if I work on it? Uh, good question. Interesting question. So this is a, a different kind of question. Um, deals with more of the uh mentality and and uh mental struggles and things like that which is perfectly valid and relevant um i've actually had a, a couple people i've worked with that have this type of uh, issue as well um go back over this i was wondering is it possible is it possible? I would say yes. Um, now, depending on whatever struggles you're you're dealing with, uh, plus if like let's say if you're introverted, like I am, it's probably it's not going to be easy, right? And and right, like it, it shouldn't be easy. Like you know, it'd be nice if things were easy, but <laughs> if things were easy, they wouldn't be really really worth doing. You know, like. Uh, which I guess is, is easy to say, <laughs> but like growth requires discomfort, right? Like just think about it literally when like, if you're a child and your body is physically growing, right? And you feel like, oh, like your legs hurt. Sometimes your arms hurt. Sometimes in English, we call those growing pains because as your body is, you know, growing, it's literally you're, you know, building more bone and, and all this stuff in order to become a, a bigger, you know, organism. Um, it's, it's exactly the same with, you know, certain life experiences, with building a skill, with learning certain things, like in order to grow, it's uncomfortable. If it's not uncomfortable, you're probably not going to grow very much. So keep that in mind. Um, it's very normal, uh, to, to go through that. Um, depression and anxiety, I won't really touch on and get too specifically on goes too specifically into, but um, this kind of general topic is something I'm probably going to like, once my channel is fully built out, I'm probably going to touch on some, some things like this more. Because um, like, like the obstacles that stand in your way, be, you know, regardless of this is how you learn pronunciation, this is how you speak, this is the grammar, like, okay, well, let's, let's figure out how to get you into a place where you can actually do those things. So I'm going to talk about the, that later on my channel, probably way far in the future. But um, 
I don't have a, like an answer of like how to do this. Uh, but I do believe it's possible. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I just don't have much to say. Like, uh, all I can give you is like encouragement. Um, but also keep in mind that it, it's probably not going to be easy. Yeah. Um, one tip, this is a random tip off the top of my head that I just thought of right now in this context. You can try and see. So there's the idea of parents in, in skill development. I took this from the art world. It's a common concept in, in art where, you know, like you're trying to learn how to draw or whatever, and you see this artist and this artist and this artist, and you say, okay, well, I like how this guy does shading. I like how this guy does bodies, you know, whatever, or I like how this girl does, you know, uh, landscapes. And so you you take this element from this person, this element from this person, and you bring it into your own art. Okay. Very powerful technique. You can use that in any skill. You can use it in music, right? Actually, that's usually how music works. You have influences from, you know, other people. Uh, like Ed Sheeran was um, clearly influenced by uh, Marvin Gaye. So like, and that's perfectly fine right? You, you take it, you, you steal pieces, right? It's not really stealing, right? You take the pieces, you transform it into your own. Um, so why I'm bringing this up here, that can apply directly to language learning as well, whether it's, you know, like, like if you like the way certain, a certain person speaks, you like their, their cadence, um, their pacing, their, you know, the, 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 certain words that they use because you know not all natives use all words obviously but you you like how this person speaks you can use them as a parent to model and to shadow um so aside from doing that you can also uh because you're trying to figure out like okay well how can i fit it well just find again the scope for you is a little broader it's kind of like life instead of just language learning but you can do it through language learning where you say let me pick say two or three don't do more than three Right. It's actually probably better maybe if you just do, I would say two, because one is kind of limited and you start at, like becoming a copy of that person. You don't necessarily want that. But two or three person, just two persons, people, and say, okay, I'm looking for people that have the conversational qualities and the confidence qualities that I want in my own speech, my own interaction. Again, if you're introverted, that might be extra hard to do, but it's possible you can do it. Okay. And so you start modeling these people, use it as input. We talk about this a lot in language learning. It's exactly the same. These three parents, two or three parents are going to become your input, uh, especially if you can see them on video, maybe they're YouTubers or something absorb their content as much as possible to the point where you start mimicking certain traits that they have okay now if you never go out and try to use it all right it's probably not going to fully form and stick so there is an element of actually trying to get out and interact with people but you can spend a period of say a few months uh, or whatever works in your life where you find these two or three people you absorb their content as much as possible you try to mimic them um, don't try to become a carbon copy of just one person, of course, but mimic them. Take things that you like. Practice repeating after them. Practice. It doesn't matter if the pronunciation or whatever is perfect. That's not the point. The point here is to speak like them in a confident way, right? Um, and in a casual way. And so when you start doing that, your brain, you're giving your brain food for, okay, this is how I do this. This is what I'm going to model. And when you get kind of comfortable with that and you start to notice, okay, yeah, I can kind of do this. Then you go and you say, let me test this. Let me actually interact with the person. And it's going to be really hard at first. It's going to drop your ability because you're nervous. You're not used to it, whatever. But you just keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that and get used to actually interacting with people after you absorb that and continue to absorb as you, you know, you're practicing those things. It's just like, you know, listening and speaking in, in language learning, except here you're working on a specific you know, specific traits from, from other speakers to develop into your own personality and your own ability um, beyond the language itself. Um, so again, not easy, but that's something you can try. 
and and let me know how it goes. Um, but uh, let's see where else are. Uh, what else we got going on here? Um, do, 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 Avi. Yes, any other speaking partners? Um, I don't know if that is related to Mr. Go Big or Go Home. Um, or something else that I was saying. I don't remember. <laughs> but um, won't recommend this one unless you have an angry hand one side. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if people are interested in that, you can check it out. Or you are a sage. Yeah. Uh, Wendell, do you have do natives? I just don't read things right. Do natives sometimes use the first pronunciation of resource? Okay, so clarifying your question there uh, with a specific example. Um, yeah, so this goes back to what I talk about, about the like the dynamic range and flow, right? So for any given, uh, I mean, the, the articulation of a particular sound is going to fit on that sort of enunciated to lazy fast range. Um, but when we're talking about at the word level, so um, let's say we have resource and resource, where you can say it as an S or, or, or a Z. There are some some speakers, uh, probably for, for regional reasons, like maybe on the West Coast, they say one, the East Coast, they say another. Sometimes that happens, right? Um, so let's say for one particular speaker, maybe they always just use the S. For another particular speaker, maybe they always just use the Z. Maybe a third speaker has been influenced by both you know like maybe one parent came from one part of the country another parent came from another part of the country uh, maybe they're both common pronunciations it's not like a super regional thing but you know it's just two ways to say the same thing and then so because they're one parent says one one parent says the other they're influenced by that and they sometimes use either one it doesn't matter it doesn't matter as long as one of the pronunciations is not like a super regional pronunciation you're fine. It, whichever one comes out is fine. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about that. Just make sure it's not super regional. Um, I, I actually have a, an example of this, but one of my roommates, for some reason, he's from Nevada, which is West Coast. So it, it, I don't know why he says this. And I've never heard anybody from any other part of the country, West, East, anywhere, say it this way, uh, except maybe once in a YouTube video from from a random person. But when he says the word taxes, he says taxes. And it's every time he says it, it's just like it stands out like like it's just waving like a a, a, a big sign saying S, not Z, taxes. It just stands out so much, so clearly. And to me, I think that that's a regional thing for sure. Like I've maybe... I just haven't been exposed to it as much, but you know, natives are generally exposed to a wide range and um, you know, not saying that he's wrong, but I would recommend that if you're going to say the word taxes that you say it with a Z um, instead of, you know, either one, but resource is, is a case where I don't think it really matters. Um, bigger question is how do you know that <laughs> ask a native? <laughs> Um, uh, okay. So we went through that. Finn is here. Sorry, Finn. I have ignored your existence, but you were here and I welcome you. Uh, King Lion Play is still here. Very good. Uh, do you have a video about R at the beginning of words? Uh, I don't have a video specifically talking about R at the beginning of words, but I do have uh, an extra practice lesson for the R sound, which includes many examples of R at the start of words. Um, Extra practice, R sound. I'm pretty sure I have a lesson for this. Extra practice. Let's probably for er. Extra practice. Oh, God, will you be complicated? Extra practice, er. And show up. Okay. I'm going to do this manually. Sometimes this YouTube search on my channel does not work. I have one made one for R. I'd be surprised. I know I made one for the R colored vowels. I L O I A half L R colored O R colored A R colored E. Oh my God! Did I not? Oh yeah, no wait, no that's B. 
Did I not make an extra practice lesson for the earth sound itself? I am a failure. What? It has to be somewhere on my channel. It just has to be. Okay, well, if it's not, oh, wait, there's another page. <laughs> Uh, and it's not there either. Uh, okay, so if I can find it, um, I will tell you about that next time. But <laughs> if I haven't made it, uh, I guess I have to make that. Huh. Because I know I did extra practice for all the vowel sounds. I don't know what's... Did I skip er? Why did I skip er? Let me check the uh, pronunciation course itself. Because maybe it's just not popping up in the search. Um, let's see. R sound. Ooh. Er. Er vowel sound. Oh, wow. Yeah, I go from er straight into ooh. And then there's ooh extra practice. Oh, I'm such a failure. Okay. It's a good thing you mentioned it, because I didn't even know I, I skipped that one. Uh, OK, so I'm going to add that to my list. Uh, that'll be a relatively quick, easy video for me to make uh, in the near future. So um, that uh, I should be able to do that relatively soon. I'm working on a lot of big stuff and, and trying to improve the content. So a lot of my energy is going there right now. But um, definitely something I can get up for you guys. Uh, or extra practice. I'm so shocked. Like how? I'm missing. There's things I just haven't made yet um, that are on my list, but that's something that should have been made a long time ago. Um, I've heard someone pronounce she doesn't know how to even, okay, she doesn't know how to even do it in the first place, as she does know how, okay, how does that sound to you? She doesn't know how, she doesn't know how, she doesn't know how, she doesn't know how, yeah, it's fine really fast, lazy. Uh, you, you can't do that if you're speaking too slowly, but that's perfectly normal, natural, native. Yeah. That's, again, where we're breaking the language because of the speed. Um, yeah, she doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. Because um, the, like, we know that, we, we, we know from, so we have the uh and does, we have the z and does. So that's remaining. Um, she doesn't know. She doesn't. Know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. You probably want to add a little bit of of nasal, just that partial nasalization. That I think also helps a bit with that because we're not saying the n. It does sound a little bit better if I try to add partial nasalization. Um, but also, I mean, the next word starts with no or with n, right? So we actually don't really need that n. Often we can commonly drop the t anyway, so we could just ignore that. And then as for the d, uh like based on the context like she and then verb and if it's she and then we hear us and then we hear no and no is the verb there's i think there's only one thing that can be between the two which is doesn't <laughs> um so based on that context plus with the little sounds that we do have uh it, it it's perfectly uh understandable yeah can you always drop the re and remember when you're not enunciating? Uh, yeah, uh, we say member, member, member. Um, and do people ever reduce it to remember? You have to remember. You have to, you have to remember. You have to remember. You have to remember. You have to remember. Maybe if we're getting really fast and lazy, but. Like when I, I, the first time I intentionally tried to do that, it came out as remember. <laughs> I had to like really focus on trying to do it, but it doesn't sound too bad to me. So maybe it can come out that way if you're speaking really fast, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the one that's better for you, the one, one, the one, one is, one, the one is better for you. The one's, one's, the one is better for you. One's. One's better for you. This, this one's better for you. This one's, 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 this one's better for you. This one's better for you. This one's, yeah. 
it works. Again, really fast, really lazy. Uh, for the average speaker, average English learner out there, I don't recommend it. Don't even try it. Like, but if you want to be able to speak really, really, really fast, uh, that that does work. See, these are the kinds of questions where, like, when I look at it, I'm like, no, and then I play with it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, because <laughs> it's just like we're not conscious of that that we do things like this. Um, can you drop the n and nasalize the vowel in month or monthly? And in fact, I need a timestamp here because uh, a fairly well-performing video that I put before was like talking about fast speech. So I'm going to uh, take advantage of Finn's questions <laughs> and see if we can reproduce those results. Uh, we're at 215, 215, 2, I've not really been keeping timestamps, but that's okay. Uh, I got some timestamps. Can you drop the N and nasalize the vowel in month and uh, monthly? Month. One month. One month. It's a monthly thing. Monthly. Maybe. Simple answer, I would say no. But maybe. Um, sorry, even I don't know don't what these uh, know what these exercises are called but most of them are from rachel's old video thanks i've already started your posture playlist okay good uh perfect yeah of course i'm aware of rachel um and i'm sure she has good exercises too i haven't heard of those specific exercises from her because i don't sit around watching other teachers content all day um and i don't want to you know be influenced too much and like steal stuff i kind of want to like it's good to grow and you know see what other people are doing but um, I want to try to make sure the stuff I'm coming up with is, is my own stuff. And then if it happens to overlap with somebody else, then that's just proof I'm on the right track and, you know, better for you because it, it lines up with them. Um, anyway, uh, PTSD. Okay. Yeah, that's tough. Um Hmm. Again, I'm not qualified, <laughs> not qualified here, but I mean, I know people can recover from stuff or at least things can get not so difficult, I guess. Uh, and that looks different for different people, you know. Um, not my expertise. Uh, taking that into consideration, I mean, yeah, you definitely have a challenge ahead of you, for sure. Um, won't be easy. But I do still think it's possible. Again, I'm, I'm not qualified. I'm not a medical professional, so my opinion may not even matter here. <laughs> but as far as what I know about uh, linguistically, language-based, um, my opinion would be that it it's still possible to reach your goals, yes. Um, but you have extra challenges. No. But, I mean, there are people who... Uh, you know, who do have extra challenges, who still succeed. Like there's, uh, I know it's a random, stupid, easy example. You know, I, I can pull things out of the air. It's, it's your reality is your reality. I, I can't truly deeply understand that. Um, although I do think that I'm not even going to mention that uh, based on my experience, because it's not even going to match yours. Um, but anyway, the, what was I going to say? I lost my thought there completely. Um, yep, lost my thought. Because <laughs> I had another thought, and I was like, no. Oh yeah, uh, like so, like like stupid simple examples, like which they're not 
stupid in themselves but you know like you might see a video of like i saw this video of like i think there's this guy who like he doesn't have any arms and legs and yet he's a black belt in some martial art and you're like how how is that possible you know people overcome you know that's a physical challenge obviously but um somebody with a physical challenge like that or even a physical challenge that's not as bad like you could just maybe like be in a wheelchair like you still have your arms but you're in a wheelchair um and you know like your men mental health just goes down because you're just like i can't walk anymore blah 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 like i can't do what i used to do and um that's very real you know so but there, there are people who have you know very big challenges like that whether you know, mentally or physically or whatever and those challenges don't necessarily go away but there are some people who don't let those challenges stop them which again is easier said than done um i do believe that if if you really want it and you are consistent and um you know you try different things see what works for you i try that that parent modeling technique uh as, as one idea um and you just don't give up you just you know which again easier said than done i know but if, if you if you keep going uh, i do believe that I, I believe the human spirit is stronger than any physical or mental obstacles that uh can be put in its way so you just, you gotta you gotta tap into that yeah but I, I i i wish you luck i hope that uh that you can work through that and 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 get over those obstacles for sure you definitely have my support um i'm just like so unqualified that i'm just like i don't know what to say <laughs> But that, that would be my two cents. Um, how can one develop that popcorn quality sound of American English? I have no idea what that means. People have asked me that before, and I have no idea what what, what that means. Um, those apps were recommendations for those who wants to start socializing in English. Oh, for those who want to start socializing in English. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, okay, so that, that's why it was related. Uh, yeah, that's another thing you can try to do. Uh, you know, little little steps, little steps. Right, like don't in 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 the case of Mr. Big or Go Home, I don't recommend jumping into the deep end of the pool. <laughs> like, you know, start in the shallow end, get your toes wet. Little pieces, little victories, little victories, little victories. Right, that that's generally recommended for anybody, but um, especially if you have the extra obstacles and, and things to to deal with, find ways to take little steps. You know. Um, and it's just day by day because a, a li one little step is not going to get you far, but one little step every day is going to get you th almost 400 steps farther than where you were, right, over a year. Um, so it, it compounds. It Not only does it add up linearly, but it will compound. Um, you just have to have that, that long-term view and just, like, keep taking those small steps. Um, but... Of course, you know, consult your mental health professional. <laughs> um, a little disclaimer, right? Work with them and keep what I said in mind and, and figure out something that uh, that works. But uh, do, 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 I think my message got deleted. Did it? If it did, I don't see it. So that would probably be why. Um, I don't know if it was for the, this is the last one I see, R at the beginning of words. Maybe I just hadn't gotten to it fast enough um, or maybe it's your next message um, okay guys we are approaching two o'clock which means i'm going to have to go soon um i'm going to try to finish up here but keep that in mind that uh i'm going to be ending soon if you have any last minute questions try to get them in but also understand that i might not have time to get to that <laughs> um okay I have a question. How are you able to teach us sounds while you're not able to hear us? You're miles away from us, just from YouTube videos. I know and I do believe it's valid, but my question is how and why? Uh, well, it's the same thing. Mumbling sound almost, okay. Uh, how are you able as in 
I am able and you're wondering how I do it because I'm a wizard or what? <laughs> I hope that's the case. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, the, the ideal situation, whether it's with a teacher or just, just a person, like just a friend, you know, who's, who's a native speaker or has a very high level, um, you would, you know, speak to that person. I see no. <laughs> Clarify, please. Um, you would speak to that person and get feedback from them, interact with them, learn from that. Um, but then... Like, as, as I was saying earlier, like the videos are guides, right? Like, even if you were working with me one on one, it's, it's a guide and I give you feedback. That's the bonus of working with me directly or, you know, working with any person, talking to a person directly. Um, you get the feedback, which is what you don't get from the videos. Uh, but you do get the guidance uh, and the, the concepts and the way to think about things. Um, I mean, how can I develop an accent from videos? Okay, so that is that does not seem to be the question that was asked. <laughs> so I misunderstood that. Um, so, okay, then don't worry, guys. I see all you there. I'm not skipping over you. Um, my goal uh, in terms of the pronunciation part of English hacks um i mean how can you give me a guide while you don't hear me yeah no that, that's a perfectly valid thing my my goal is to as much as possible for as many people as possible reduce or eliminate the need for a teacher right um, now, some people, they just like having a teacher. They like the guidance. Um, you know, maybe they, they learn a bit better that way, and that's fine. Uh, but I'm very, very big on self-learning. And um, right, I'm not just teaching you the sounds. I'm also trying to give you the techniques, like the shadowing and the micro adjustments and, and you know the, the phase zero work that we do in the mouth posture and things like that. I'm trying to give you the techniques and skills that will allow you, and the ear training too, that will allow you to get the result by yourself. So, because obviously I can't work with everybody. Like, there's too many people in the world, right? So, uh, but I also don't like that. I mean, like, obviously I charge for classes. I got to work. Um, I'm trying to make money for this. And I still give you guys, you know, so much away for free that I should probably charge for. Um, but like, I, I really hate when, you know, it, it doesn't have to be for a language. It could be for some other thing, but, uh, where you see like, like somebody just tries to get you to sign up for their course and sell you like, you know, like a thousand, two thousand dollar thing that promises results. And then you, you know, you pay for it and then you try it and then it doesn't work. And, you know, it's like, I'd rather just give you the skills that you need instead of trying to like sell you on the promise of the result. Right. Um, because I can't give you the result. That's the whole thing. I can't give you the result. Only you can get the result. So even if you're working with me or you're working with somebody else, you are the only person who can produce the sound. You are the only person who can develop your accent. No one can do that for you. So again, the feedback is the big missing link that you don't get from the videos and that's an issue. You need feedback of some kind, whether that's training your ears and getting feedback from yourself through experience and, and trial and error, or the easier way working with somebody, even if it's just a native speaker, to tell you how you sound. Because all you really need at the end of the day, if you have a native speaking friend, right, you jump on Skype, some random dude from, you know, the middle of, of the United States, and you're like, Hey, buddy, language exchange. I'll teach you Arabic. You teach me English, right? Let's practice. And you're not even teaching. You're just practicing, right? And you say, okay, so this is you know, free language exchange. It doesn't have to be this way. You could pay somebody to, to do this, whatever. But you, you don't need to actually have somebody give you, like, tell you how to change things. My videos, hopefully, are going to give you the skill to know 
what you should be aiming for and how to change things, then all you need is any native speaker to tell you, okay, I'm trying to produce the R sound, er, and they'll tell you, doesn't sound quite right. That's all you need. If you have the right skills, you just need that little bit of feedback, you make a change, or still doesn't sound right, make a change, still doesn't sound right, make a change, still doesn't sound right, make a change, right? And preferably tell the, ask them to tell you, does it sound like I'm getting closer or does it sound like I'm getting farther? Now, the benefit of working with somebody like me who is a teacher and who has experience is that I can help pinpoint exactly what you're doing wrong and help speed up that process. But at the end of the day, you apply this, you know, get your tongue working, build up the awareness, apply micro adjustments, try the sound, get the feedback. And if they say you're sounding closer, you keep going that way. That's the basic skill that I'm trying to give you. You, you have the ability to manipulate it to get closer. And then if they say, oh, you're getting farther away, you know, you made the wrong kind of change. Okay. So my goal is to be able to give you what you need to where the only missing piece is just a little bit of feedback from any native speaker. Okay. So... Yeah, you're right. And then, of course, uh, you know, I might be familiar with Spanish or with this or that language, and I might know, oh, yeah, okay, Spanish speakers push their tongue forward. And so that's a big piece that I can send out to Spanish speakers because I'm familiar with that, right? Um, but even then, that's just a piece of information. You have to figure out what that feels like and how to change that. So um, so the real answer to your question is Uh, how can you develop an accent from videos? You don't. <laughs> the videos give you information that you need and skills that you need so that you can then develop the accent within yourself. Okay. Um, again, with a little bit of feedback from somebody else. And if you have really, really good ears, because maybe you've learned multiple languages, you're big on ear training, like somebody like Edao Ness has really, really good ears um, and will be able to hear subtle sound differences and doesn't necessarily need that that native feedback. Um, but if, you know, English is your first language, your ears, you know, could maybe be a little bit better and stuff, then that's where it's really, really hard and you kind of need that external feedback to, to make sure that you're on track. So anyway, um, Let's see if we can finish up here. I want to clarify something. My friend said I sound like a five-year-old because of how they struggle to say sounds and overpronounce certain things. That would have been useful earlier. Yeah. So the problem is in the sounds, not in the voice. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then number one, you got to make sure you're doing the sounds right. Okay. Number two, notice you said overpronounce, or we might say overarticulate, overenunciate. Um, I'm going to, I have it in, in my list of, of coming up videos um, that I'm probably going to be making. Uh, it's going to be called something like do not enunciate, right? Because what is, what does every teacher tell you? Enunciate. No, that's not how English works. Okay. Now there's a line, right? You can sound clearer if you enunciate in the right way. But if you just enunciate like everything, right? So. For example, if I try to very clearly say every single sound and every single word, I'm going to not only sound a little bit strange, but I am also going to be breaking the basic structure and rhythm of the language. No natives talks that way. We don't, we don't do it. Okay. Now that's maybe an extreme case. Maybe you're not doing that. You're just sort of doing it for certain sounds or, you know, maybe your, your stress to unstress ratio is, is a little off. Okay. So that's the extreme case, but you got to go in and find, okay, what sounds am I over pronouncing? Like maybe you're er, maybe you're saying er run when you should say run. Okay. Um, like we were talking about earlier, 
maybe it's with that rhythm and stress. So uh, maybe instead of saying, right, I want to go to the beach, maybe you're trying to make the stress too stressed. You're saying like, I want to go to the beach. It's too much. <laughs> okay. You don't want to do that. So figure out what it is, tone it down, you know, um, other than if I don't know any specific issues, which I mean, I don't have time to cover specific issues today necessarily, but uh, in, you know, if you come back next week or whatever, we can maybe talk about some specific sounds, some specific parts of the language, but otherwise you have to identify those and uh, figure those out. Uh, Pieter, what do you think about Italy concerning the new president? I don't know. I don't pay attention to the news. Um, I didn't even know Italy had a new president. Um mumbling sound, almost popcorn quality. That, uh, okay. So I, I know what mumbling means, but I don't see how that relates to popcorn. Like I don't, I guess that's how somebody thought to describe it, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and the question was, how can one develop that? Po so how can one, so you're basically asking, how can I mumble in American English? <laughs> don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't even. I don't understand the question. Um, I guess I'll I'll try to look that up. I'll like popcorn quality American English and, and see. I'll, I'll give my opinion on that later. But uh, it just doesn't make sense. Um, okay. By popcorn, I mean that deep, dark, sort of creaky quality. Okay, so. My recommendation, do not try to artificially make your voice deep. You're just going to sound strange. Do not try to get a creaky quality. If you like it, fine, fine, whatever. It's called vocal fry. Um, many Americans will use it, uh, especially when we just wake up. I actually use it. Uh, I'll, I'll use it sometimes in the flow of my speech, but usually when I first wake up, I, I don't want to talk. So uh, what, 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 what do you want? Okay, whatever. Um, I personally don't recommend that. If you like it, fine, go ahead. But uh, it's, I would recommend that you be a little careful with it. Uh, and also, if you get that vocal fry, if you get that creaking, that's actually not healthy for your vocal cords. So you're actually doing damage to your vocal cords. Um, so, you know, up to you. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I recommend just sort of staying away from that. Um, now. That being said, when we talked about lowering this here, that will slightly lower your voice. Just like when I try to, to, to raise it, it does slightly raise my voice. Very slightly. It's not some drastic change. Um, so that will help you get a little bit of a deeper sound for sure. But trying to like, if you're trying to sort of like sound like this, let me, let me also get that creaky. So if you're trying to talk like this, like this just does not, like if you like the sound of this and you want to speak this way, fine, do it but I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's your choice. Uh, <clears throat> I think for me, it's <clears throat> very severe because now I've gotten to a point where whenever I see a person's face, I get flashbacks and it's really frustrating because I've been on antidepressant and that hasn't had any effects on me. And now I can't even get a job like it's affecting my life. I don't know how to move life, move forward in life. Yeah, it's very tough. Um, Well, I would hope that you're, you're, I mean, I don't know if you have access or, or what, uh, I would hope ideally you're, you know, you have some, uh, medical professional help that you're, you're getting, uh, to help or to deal with that. Uh, I mean, you said antidepressant, so I guess somebody had to prescribe that to you. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah. The, uh, I mean, you can explore different options, uh, you know, that may not be normal approaches. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to recommend anything specific. Again, I'm not a medical professional. I don't want you to like go do something crazy and then blame it on me. Um, but like, I'm, I'm just not qualified to talk on this point. Uh, but if you do try to implement for example, what I talked about with that parent modeling thing, right? At first, that, that's, that's, that's the good, good part about it is at first, 
you don't even have to interact with anybody, right? Like you could just sit, watch videos and just pay attention, like find again, two or three people that you like, watch their videos, right? Find YouTubers that you like how they speak. You like, uh, their, their confidence, you know, you like their personality. Okay. And just, you don't even have to try to use it. You don't have to interact with anybody. Just absorb their content. Just like suck it into your brain, right? For say three months, just that maybe even six months. Okay. And just model them, start adding in these little traits and maybe sort of role play by yourself. Okay. Where this might be kind of hard at first, given, given the, the condition, but if you can start kind of trying to do it in your mind where you're not actually interacting with somebody, but like you kind of, you're absorbing some stuff. You've been sort of getting used to, okay, I like this trait. I like this trait. You kind of start to, to say like, Oh, how would I say that? If I say it like this person, you start trying to act it out a little bit as you're absorbing this content. And then you can do exercises where maybe like, you know, maybe like you close your eyes, you go into your mind, you imagine yourself in a situation where you're just, you're talking to a, a person, a stranger, right? Now, hopefully that doesn't trigger anything. I mean, you know, you know, you, you know, you better than me. I'm just giving you sort of an idea here, but you can sort of imagine that, okay, I, I, maybe imagine it as a friend instead of a stranger or whatever, whoever it is, but say like, you see this friend, you see this person, and then you're going to try to in your mind without actually interacting with somebody try to implement the things that you've been absorbing from this content and try to actually act it out okay now you have a very low stakes environment where you're not actually interacting with somebody in real life okay um you get to sort of practice in your mind which is a very powerful technique people dismiss it but it's a very very powerful technique just even like just building skills um and so you spend some time, it's like you're rehearsing in your mind. You're sort of like getting used to the idea, getting used to what it feels like if you were interacting with a person. And then eventually, say maybe after six months, maybe after eight months, okay, you're probably never going to feel ready. But given your condition, I would give it a good period of time to like get comfortable with at least the idea. <laughs> Um, and then when you go and interact with somebody, you'll kind of already be used to it a little bit in your head. You just have to get used to actually interacting with another person. Um, and that might be a good path to go is sort of do this step by step immersion period where you're soaking up these personality traits, trying to play with them yourself, imagining using them yourself before you actually ever hit a real life situation. Okay. Um, that would be my recommendation. Maybe consult your medical professional about that idea. Get, you know, clip out this part of the live stream and you know, or show it to them or whatever, and see what they think. If if you know if they understand English, um, whatever it is, uh, and if if they don't think that's a good idea, because they know you and them know your situation better than I do, then you know maybe think of something else. But. Um, I, I, I would think that they would probably be on board with that. Um, and, uh, you know, modify it as you have to for your situation. I'm just kind of giving you a general idea here of what to do. Um, and again, not qualified. It's my two cents. Um, you know, always consult your, uh, your medical professional. But yeah, um, I'm technically over time. Let me try to finish this up here really quick. Can you think of a word we're using a plus er diphthong rather than e plus er sounds weird? Uh, not particularly. There are maybe some, let me see. So we're using a plus er rather than e plus er sounds weird. So to me, it just kind of always sounds like ear. Like when I, when I heard other teachers saying it's ear with a, I was like, no. <laughs> And then I kind of played with it and I realized, oh, this is actually a range. Um, it's sort of like like for the ing added ending using in instead of ing, where it's like e plus n instead of a plus ng. Um, I wasn't aware of that either because I just say in, uh, but they both work. Um, so, but if I say like, 
uh, if I say if, if I really try to get that E super clear and I say like mirror, like mirror, mirror, it can maybe sound a little bit weird. Um, I'm going for the E. But if I just speaking normally, I just say mirror, 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 me, e, e. still an E, right? It sounds fine. If I say mirror, mirror, and I try to enunciate the I, that also sounds a little bit weird <laughs> to me. But if I just say it normally and I try to hit the I instead of E, mirror mirror sounds fine so i think it's more like if for some reason somebody is like over enunciating that ear or ear that's what will make it maybe sometimes sound weird but in general like i don't think there are really any cases um that where it would it would be like that's that sounds wrong um maybe the word spirit like somebody says spirit but even then, like I, I've heard that enough times, that it's, it's a perfectly fine variation. Like it doesn't matter. So, yeah, like uh, so. The speakers seem to go back and forth between the two. A R R range what? Oh, a rural range. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, it is range. Ear, 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 and every ear, ear, and everything in between. As long as you hit something like that, you don't go down to air. As long as you hit that that range there, it's going to sound great. So uh, anyway, okay, I got to go, guys. Thanks for another live stream. Um, I'm going to want your guys' feedback on the videos that are coming up because, as I said, I'm trying to improve the quality. Um, so we'll see how things go. King Lion says bye. Bye. Um, I will see you guys next week. Bye. That's the wrong bye. <laughs> You're going to buy me. I am not an item, sir. <laughs> um, see you next week. Yes. Thanks for stopping by, Mr. Go Big or Go Home. Um, good luck. Uh, I support you. I fully support you. And, and I, I think you could do it. You can get through it. Um, thank you for answering my questions. No problem. LMAO, yeah. <laughs> I am not an object. <laughs> That's okay. Good. So thank you guys. I'll see you next week. Leave? No, I don't want to leave. I always forget I have to turn off the thing. By the way, my name is Sam. Okay. Well, good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, I'll try to remember that. <laughs> I'm horrible remembering specific names, but I'll try to tie that to your username. Um, good. Okay. End broadcast. Goodbye. <laughs>